podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. This is episode 1839. Enjoy. Oh, one more note. I won't be here next week. I'm taking the Halloween weekend off. We're going down to the Day of the Dead celebrations in Oaxaca, Mexico. So if you are a podcast subscriber and you don't get a tech guy next week, that is not an error. There was no tech guy. We'll resume in two weeks with episode 1841. So just a note, don't be disappointed next weekend. Go out, get some candy, enjoy Halloween. The Tech Guy Podcast is brought to you by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days and, and are always on them, whether it's live streaming content, catching up with family on weekly video calls, or watching your favorite podcast. There's no room for fraud calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor, 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash activearmor for details. And by Nareva. Nareva is revolutionizing audio for meeting and learning spaces by making it possible to get full room microphone coverage in medium to large spaces without the cost and complexity of multi-component pro AV solutions. And that's a revolution. Learn more at Nareva.com slash twit. And by userway.org. Userway ensures your website is accessible, ADA compliant, and helps your business avoid accessibility-related lawsuits. The perfect way to showcase your brand's commitment to millions of people with disabilities. It's not only the right thing to do, it's also the law. Go to userway.org slash twit for 30% off Userway's AI-powered accessibility solutions. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We got your smartphones. We got your smart watches. We got all that jazz. Yes, it's time to talk tech. I'm sorry. I apologize. The geeks are taking over the radio for the next three hours. Sorry about that. I'm sure there's a gardening show somewhere else or something, you know. You could watch cricket. But here, we're going to talk about the stuff that's changing the world. Speaking of which, Facebook is going to announce a new name this week. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I've been waiting. That's a little strange. Oh, Micah Sargent, good to see you. Oh. I didn't expect to see you here, too. <laughs> good to see you. My, uh, my, uh, what, what are we going to call you? Like, uh, if I were Batman, you'd be Robin. Yes. If I were uh, Wonder Woman, you'd be the lasso of truth. <laughs> I like that one. I'm yeah. the lasso of truth. Yeah, you're the lasso of truth. He is uh, my apprentice, soon, soon, soon to be. He's tech guy number two right now. But who knows? <laughs> who knows? As time passes, as you spend more time in Oaxaca, in Oaxaca, I'm going to be in Mexico next weekend. I know. I'm excited for the Day of the Dead. No, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk. <laughs> it's Facebook. Oh right yeah, now. Facebook. Thank you for remembering. So, why are they going to change their name? Well. <laughs> Have you noticed all the news about Facebook? It never ends, by the way. There's more and more and more and more constant headlines about Facebook. And here's the latest from the New York Times. Eternal docs show the extent of Facebook's knowledge of extremist groups on its site, but don't, don't offer a complete picture of its decision-making in response. Here's NBC News. Facebook employees created a test account in 2019, and within days it was recommended extreme and conspiratorial content including QAnon groups. Here's from Bloomberg. This is just today. Right. Internal docs show Facebook staff faulted the company for failing to thwart the proliferation, that's a lot of big words, of groups like Stop the Steal that fomented, let's do it again, January 6th violence. The Washington Post, Facebook user reports of false news hit 40,000 per hour. This is users reporting false news 40,000 per hour on January 6th the Instagram account reported most often for inciting violence was take a guess at real Donald Trump yes you guessed 
Another Washington Post. A new whistleblower, a former member of Facebook's integrity team, files an SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, complaint alleging Facebook prized profits over fighting hate speech and misinfo. Did you see Facebook's response to that? No. The, uh, the spokesperson who responded just tried to lay into the Washington Post saying, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is below blame you. Blame the victim, is, blame yeah, the messenger. Exactly. Yeah. Anything but say, well, let, we'll look into it or... You know, no, they're not even bothering to deny it anymore. It's just, well, that person's stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> exactly. You said I'm stupid. No, you're stupid. Uh, here's another one. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. You get the message. Um, so what's the solution to that? How do we fix it? Oh, we'll change our name. <laughs> then they won't know who, what? Apparently, Facebook uh, is looking to the future because the present ain't so great. And uh, I mean, it's pretty clear. Look, I know every I know people love Facebook. It's where you you know keep track of your grandkids or your schoolmates or your your friends. It's where you meet people. It's where you get together. A lot of people sell their you know they have garage virtual garage sales on Facebook. I mean, you know, there's a lot of good uses for Facebook. I'm not knocking it. I'm not knocking it. But it is pretty clear as we start to see this pattern show up that Facebook is unusually, well, maybe not so unusually, pretty normally focused on profits over anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's evidence Google's doing the same thing. There's evidence that everybody, this is... It's like companies that's what, are after profit or what? something. What a shock. Yeah. In this, what? <laughs> profit? So, yeah, pe people over profit is the slogan uh, you know, the people who are resisting Facebook's people over profit. But, you know, this goes back, you know, Ford Motor Company when they were making Pintos <laughs> that exploded. And uh, it goes back to the big tobacco when they're saying smoking, what smoking cancer? What do you what? what? <laughs> Why would you say that? Um, so it's a longstanding tradition. But I think, and actually Philip Morris did rename itself. A human tradition, frankly. Yeah, it's a human. It goes back to the ancients. What is, do you remember what Philip Morris's new name is? Um, good folks. No, no I don't, I'm not sure. You don't. And that's the point, right? Yeah, exactly. It goes well, away. But but Facebook, I mean, what do we get? Are we going to have people going, I, I'm looking for my Facebook and I can't find it now. And we have to say, well, they just changed their name. Same with, with Alphabet, uh, Google's parent company. I think it's kind of like that. Actually. We still call Google, still Google Google. Yeah, we know. We know who it is. I think the only place that uh, calls it Alphabet is like the New York Times. And when they do, they're saying Google's parent company, Alphabet, because it's still so clunky to refer to it the other way. So I don't know how much of an of a true fix this is. Do you think, I mean, am I being cynical in, in saying some foolish person somewhere decided that this was going to fix their problems? How could this fix their problems? What we think uh, is <laughs> that they want to focus on the metaverse. This is a whole new thing. And you're going to see, it's not just uh, Facebook doing this. Apple's really big into it. Google, Microsoft. This is the, the, everybody's looking. What's the next iPhone, right? The iPhone was such a transformative product that when it came out, it like the rest of the tech industry just look could look on with awe. And that's been now since 2007. That's been 14 years. And so the big question everybody asks in the tech industry is what's the next big thing and how do and how do we get in on it and uh they seem to have converged well self-driving vehicles that's one right um but they seem to have all kind of converged on something they're calling uh aug augmented reality or ar and i think it's because it's kind of like a phone only it's not because you wear it on your face but other than that, it's kind of, it, it's a, for them, it's a logical extension of what they're already doing with phone technology. So they go, well, we can, we can see our way clear to that. Self-driving vehicles, they're trying that too, but it, it, Apple's doing it, Google's doing it, and, but it's hard. But maybe we can make some spectacles that'll go on your face. And Facebook's all into this. They bought a company called Oculus, which makes the, probably the premier virtual reality. Those are those you know goggles that you wear and you pretend you're a, a knight in shining armor fighting and you and you feel like you know oh my gosh look at me with my shining armor i'm saving the maiden fighting the dragon and everybody's watching you and goes what a dork oh my god what is he doing he's dancing around in strange ways and that's 
That's basically my interpretation of virtual reality. But augmented reality isn't quite that bad because you can still see the world, but there's princesses superimposed on top of your house or something. Anyway, Facebook is really into this. They call it the metaverse. Expect a new name, something implying... Meta book. How about Second Life? Anybody have that yet? Uh, I've never heard of that. No. Yeah, Second By the way, uh, give $10 to Scooter X. He <laughs> figured out that uh, the new name is Altria. Alt moving beyond smoking, it says on their webpage. Altria. Yeah, to vaping. I don't know, you know. Protecting the environment. Community impact. Balancing work and life. What it's like. And we're not, don't think, don't think of us as Philip Morris. We're Altria. <laughs> ah, it's altruism, but made into a brand. I get it <laughs> The now. Altria family of companies. So it'll be something like that. Don't think Facebook. No, we're your new life. Trademark registered. Something like that. Life zone. That's what I'm putting my money on. Life zone. <laughs> Life zone. Yeah, I think they really want to get away from that whole Facebook thing. So it's not gonna it's not gonna be like it's gonna be something futuristic. Anyway, we'll find out this week what Facebook's new name is. Apple has announced a uh, pair of new products. I apologize because I I really thought that Apple would announce a new Mac Mini. They didn't. It was just laptops. But um, in some ways, they surprised because these new chips they're going to use, and the names are dopey, the uh, M1 Max <laughs> and the M1 Pro. So the new Mac will have an M1 Max. It's the M1 Max Mac. Uh, and uh, it is, but, but they did surprise because these are really amazing, fast chips we thought the last year's m1 was fast but this one these are as as two to four times faster which is not normal in a year that you get something that big a leap so that'll that'll be kind of interesting we'll talk about that uh a little more in a bit uh did i say the phone number i didn't 8888 ask leo if you want to call and talk high tech ask a question make a suggestion comment on the day's news come up with a new name for facebook Altria. <laughs> oh, uh, you could also uh, just call in the harangue. I don't care. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's toll-free in the U.S. or Canada outside that area. You can call uh, using Skype, and you should still reach us. There's a website where you can also leave comments, but you can also get links to anything we talk about. Uh, is techguylabs.com. Techguylabs.com. And you could call with a spirited defense of Facebook or leave a comment. That's fine. I understand. Uh, TechGuyLabs.com. No charge for that. No sign up. We want a name. Basically, we want a name no one will remember. Now, I wonder if Facebook's going to do that. A name like nobody would remember it. You think? But they, they love putting their branding on everything. Instagram by Facebook, Oculus by Facebook, mm -hmm. all of these. So I wonder if they're going to give up that for the sake of disappearing into the background, like Amazon did with, with Ring and with a lot of oh, those. Oh, so they might stay, still say Instagram by Altria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that you're sticking with which, the Altria. Which would be very confusing. <laughs> do I smoke it? Do I? What do I do with it? How, do, how does this work? How does this work? Is can this? I get NFTs uh, for, for tokens? Oh, I can yeah. plug into my vape and get uh, special NFT flavors. Rintaro <laughs> says they're going to call it Forget About It. I like that. Forget About, forget it. about it. Hello, Kim Sheffer, <laughs> telephone <laughs> woman, the unbreakable phone angel, the person who answers your calls. Good to see you. Good to see you. Was that little Bobby Brown singing that? Wow. I was going to, you know, I was going to ask if that was Bobby Brown. Wow. I didn't know he was a famous He was very, child star. very young when yeah. he started. So Kim. Yes. Has one job, one job only. Hmm. We, have we come up with a new name for you yet? Everybody should. We're going to rename everybody. <laughs> Big Pee Wee is now Rather Large Herman. <laughs> Micah Sargent is now Nico Sargento. Like the cheese. I'm Lito Lafort. <laughs> and you, so this way, we're all going to be like Facebook. It'll be like Facebook. <laughs> you will never know who you're talking to. 
Um, Kim Schaffer, what should we call her? Uh, she is hard. Yeah, that one is hard because <laughs> it's such a short first name. Yeah. Bobby Brown. There Bobby you go. Brown. Bobby Brown. Right. <laughs> Not really wanting to be associated with him. Yeah, no, but okay. I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So who should I... Uh, uh, let's go to Frank in Santa Ana because his question has to do with Facebook. So we may as well just stay oh, on topic. Let's, let's stay with Facebook. Absolutely. Line Thank four. you, Kim. Let's go to line four. Got to press that button. Press this button. Hello there, Mr. Frank from Santa Ana. Mr. Leo Laporte. Yes, sir. Greatest... Uh, technical mind on the radio today. Oh, my golly. That's really a small group, actually. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not, that's not yeah, saying that much, but okay. I'll take it. <laughs> what can uh, I... A couple of questions. Yes, uh, sir. Number one, if uh, you can repeat the name of the company that uh, you can put all your personal photographs in your uh, cellular phone hey, along with all the other hey, Robin, important information into the cloud, the cloud, yeah, and in case your cellular phone gets stolen or destroyed or whatever, you you haven't lost that information. You just buy another cellular phone and all that information. All three of the big right. phone, yeah, all three of the big phone manufacturers now offer that uh, service: Samsung, Apple, and Google. So, are you on an iOS or an Android device? Android. All right. Do you use a Samsung Android device? Samsung. Yeah, so you can do belt and suspenders. So if you look in uh, your settings on an Android device, you look at backup and reset is usually, depending on the device, the uh, area, you'll see that you can back up your phone to Google under your Google account. Now, that's not going to back up some things. Like for security reasons, not, it's not going to back up passwords. So you should use a separate program for that, a password manager ideally. But it will back up photos, contacts, Ad, uh, you know, addresses, uh, calendar, um, bookmarks. If you use Chrome, what else? What else do you want to have backed up? Oh, I guess uh, certain letters and documents and everything I've typed up and I've put. Uh, ah, I've that's a little trickier. Yeah, if you because uh, when you think of a phone, you don't usually think of a My Documents folder on a phone. The way mobile operating systems generally work is each application that you use to create those documents has its own storage on the phone. So those are often not backed up. Um, if you used, however, Google's documents uh, programs, uh, Google, um, I don't even know what their word processor is called. Uh, Sheets is their spreadsheet. If you use those Google Docs, which are free and available, those would be backed up also to your Google account. Uh, Samsung does not offer uh, note-taking. Oh, yeah, they do, Samsung Notes. So it kind of depends on where you take that, write down that information. Um, I have I have Yahoo, so I'll, be, I'll still be able to uh, back it up on Google, Google, though I have Yahoo as well. Yeah, but you, you, pro you almost certainly, if you have an Android device, have a Google account with that Android device. And that's probably okay. where you should check just to make sure. But go again, go in the backup and reset in the settings and look and see. And there's a checkbox that says backup to Google. And I find that really useful. I change phones a lot. And, you know, always trying the new phone. Google's new phone's coming out on Tuesday. Uh, it was came, they announced it on Tuesday. It's coming uh, to me on Tuesday. And, uh, and of course, I'll be switching over. But because I back up to the Google account, I think that'll be a fairly painless switchover. Even some carriers now, Verizon just started offering a backup for Verizon. Um, my, my suggestion is it's probably best to go with Apple if you have an iPhone. iCloud will back up almost everything. Go with Google if you have an Android device. That's free. Um, and then make sure if it's things like passwords you want to save or you're taking notes in a note-taking application, make sure that those programs also back up to the cloud. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Scott Wilkinson coming up. You can if you want. I don't actually think it's a great thing to do but you can back up locally if you want micah you're the one who told me about iMazing on the iphone and that'll do a local backup if you mm -hmm. didn't want to pay for apple's cloud that would that would be yeah that's yeah that's your other option and i think uh you know there are a few systems that allow you to i mean because it works on windows as well so you would be able to use that but with an android device i'm not sure about the, the local backups there there used to be there was a program called Titanium. There used to be a bunch of Android backup programs.
programs, I think because Google does such a good job of it, uh, that that business has kind of gone away. So I guess I got the, uh, we used to be back up and recess. Now accounts and sync. And if under accounts in your settings, if you check the auto sync data and you could say what gets backed up and all of that is backed up by Google pretty much for free unless you have a huge amount uh, then you might have to pay for more uh, storage used to be there were programs third party programs that would back up separately I, I think mm -hmm. I think Google's kind of eaten that one alive hello Scotty hello Leo oh you can replug your uh, USB interface if you would because you are sounding like a robot. Oh, you're sounding oh. like the Baron Harkonnen <laughs> on a ba after eating a bad sandwich. Okay, so I need to replug. Just, just unplug, unplug the Scarlet and plug it back in again. Usually okay. that fixes it. Yeah, or it could be the Benny Gesserit voice. It could be that, or that, uh, how's that? Yeah, that's much better. Or the guy who leads the Emperor's Sadu car shock troops. Listen to these nerds. <laughs> Did you go see it? Sorry. I saw it at home. I sat at home in my uh, my oh. couch on my 4K, uh, beautiful LG 4K display, and we sat really close pretend to pretend it was IMAX. Good. You 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 need uh, For this case, you need to sit really close. It needs to be really big. You know what, though, was most uh, impressive to me? The Hans Zimmer soundtrack was so good. Ah, really good. Oh, my God. It's really the best good. soundtrack I've heard in years. <laughs> Without the soundtrack, I don't know if it would be as such as a good movie. But, boy, that was such a good soundtrack. So, yeah, you yeah. definitely want a good stereo. And oh, it is a beautiful wow. film. I, yes. I would, I, I'm going to go see it again. I liked it so much. I want to see it in IMAX now. Did you see it? Well, you, I saw it in IMAX. Oh, so you can tell us. No spoilers, yep. Joe. Don't worry. Although no, no, no. the book was written in 1965, so if you don't know what happened, <laughs> maybe the last 55 years have been completely wasted. Um, it's actually better than the book. I almost hate to say that. I can't believe you said that yesterday and you're saying it again. You're doubling down on that. The book is so good. It's Ooh, one of my favorite me. books. I've read it at least two or three times. And yet, the movie is actually... The movie is... I'm not sure I would agree. I personally would agree with that. See, but. everyone's really cautious about saying that. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. I mean, the movie... The book has a lot more detail, obviously. Yes. In fact, my biggest complaint is this was a huge mistake to try to put it in two movies. And it would have yep. been so much better if they had done a deal with Apple or HBO or Amazon and did, you know, 20, 30 hours worth. Maybe then you could do it justice. Well, that's what they're doing with Foundation. Yeah, and they, they aren't doing as good a job with Foundation. But they aren't doing nearly as good a job. No, Denis Villeneuve is a very good director, and he's really yes, showing his stuff. Yes, although I, I have to say that like Blade Runner 2049, it's it it's a little soulless. Well, sci-fi has that. Well, we can, let's talk. Well, that's what we're talking about. He did let his hair grow, top and bottom, but it didn't come out on the top. He is hip. He is Scott Wilkinson, home theater geek. Did you used to have long hair when you were young? a young man? I bet you did. Yeah. You that were, fro, actually. A fro? Yeah, oh, I want yeah. pictures. Now I need photos. <laughs> I want pictures. <laughs> yeah. You done did it now. <laughs> that is, sounds good. Oh, man. Okay, I got to dig something up. All right. Scott is our home theater geek. He is a contributor to TechHive.com. Joins us every week to talk about big screen TV, surround sound, Dolby Atmos, yep. light speed displays. And this week, <laughs> I'm thinking we're going into space. Indeed we are. I went to see Dune at IMAX, the first time I'd been in a commercial cinema in almost two years. Uh, it it was uh, it was pretty good in terms of safety. I felt pretty safe. Uh, there was an empty seat on either side of me. I was wearing a mask. And if anything could get me out to the theaters, it would be Dune. Although, mm -hmm. and there's some controversy over this. I know the producers weren't happy. HBO or Warner decided to put it on HBO Max for free, and that's where I watched it. Well, for subscription. Well, yeah, but if I already had an HBO Max subscription because so of Succession, so, so 
Yeah. But One, have, either succession yeah. or Dune is free. Um, <laughs> but I, we watched it on a 4K TV with a nice sound system. By the way, I think sound might be as important as picture to this movie. The soundtrack oh, absolutely. is no remarkable. No question. No question. Dune was a, a Frank Herbert wrote Dune in the '60s, a science fiction yeah. novel beloved by people of oh. our vintage. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I read it in college, and since then, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and and it's it has always been said that it's impossible to make a film out of it. David Lynch mm -hmm. proved that true some years ago <laughs> with his attempt. Then the Sci Fi Channel did a series. I didn't even try to watch that. No, I didn't either. Um, the David so, Lynch movie I did not like, but I've been hearing a number of people this. It's now a cult that, classic. That, that that have said, "Oh yeah, it's great, it's great." No, no, it's, it's a know. cult classic. It wasn't Dune, yeah. but for what it was, it was fine. It was yeah, basically yeah. Buck Rogers to Star right. Wars, right? Right. And right. this is to Star Wars <laughs> what Buck Rogers was to Star Wars. This is uh -huh. very much the next generation. I was totally prepared to hate it because I loved mm -hmm. the the novel. How interesting. And I loved it. Did you? Yes, I did. And I saw it at home. Although everybody's saying you should go to the theater. You should absolutely go to the theater for this one. Uh, you know, you said, before we were on the air, you said you sat really close to the screen to get a big picture. Yeah. And that's what I would recommend if you're going to see it at home. I mean, but there's nothing like seeing it in an IMAX uh, It was filmed, a lot of it was filmed on IMAX cameras. Well, a lot, but not all. Correct. And so the aspect ratio changes I find if you go that to an IMAX. Annoying. So sometimes I, I, it didn't bother me at okay. all. I didn't even hardly notice. I was looking for it, you know, specifically as a re as a technical reviewer. I was looking for it, and I did see it, but it didn't bother me in the least little bit. Oh, good. The, all right. The scenes on Arrakis, on the planet Dune, uh, where where the aspect ratio really makes it gets taller. The, the width is the same in all cases. It's just whether or not you you have the letterbox bars or not. And those scenes on Dune are just stunning. Oh, my God. I um, mean, the whole movie is, is visually brilliant, just gorgeous. And as you say, the soundtrack... In, in IMAX, there's a, they have a 12-channel sound system. So there's some stuff overhead, and there's some stuff surrounding you. And I got... The seat that the projectionist at the IMAX at TCL, a friend of mine, uh, recommended as the best oh, sound great. seat in the house. That, you got an inside uh, guy. I did, that's yeah. That's awesome. What is the best seat? Uh, R415. <laughs> is that like middle of the middle or? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, about two-thirds back. Oh, that it's far just, back. Huh. Well, the IMAX screen is huge. Yeah. And you want to be able to uh, take it all in, I guess. If you, you sit do, too close, you you're You don't want to be around. moving your moving your head yeah. around from side to side. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it it's visually gorgeous. The sound is spectacular. It's Hans Zimmer's score, I thought, was fantastic. I completely agree. It blew Just me away. Fantastic. You couldn't have picked somebody better for this. No, it's true. Uh, just stunning. Yeah. The drums and oh, just oh beautiful. yeah, and the and the music is mixed way around. Now I will tell you this, I found the dialogue intelligibility not to be great in some cases. Well, we've there established moments... now that you're completely deaf. <laughs> <laughs> this, you had the That's same complaint true. about Foundation. I, I I had no problem understanding the you had dialogue no okay. in either Foundation or no. I really I think you know, but okay. I'm captions, gonna, gentlemen. Yeah, I know. Micah. Yeah, Micah's be, really into Micah, captions. Micah says, Micah, a, sorry. Micah's a young guy. He's under 30 and still, so he can't say and he's still. Deep. Yeah, that's true. I have to say, I, I this one, I don't want captions because it's so beautiful. I just want to enjoy you the You don't want to be distracted from the visuals. That's absolutely true. And I'm going to make a confession. And I think maybe yeah. this is why I don't have the problem. I listen on stereo speakers. Well, then you're not getting the full immersive effect. <laughs> that was pretty damn immersive. I felt like I was there. <laughs> I don't need it coming from behind me and above me. I really... Oh, I think but those spaceships, when they fly overhead, those ornithopters... Well, I'll go see it in IMAX, but... Uh, you should. You really should. Yeah. I have, really a, should. I have no, a pretty I good stereo. And in fact, I could have watched it in the living room with a 5.1 surround sound system, but I... The stereo and the 4K, and it just I feel like that's the best. It way was, to watch yeah, it. I'm sure it was great. Now, I will tell you this: I measured the sound levels, as I normally do, and 
they were right at where the MPAA says movies should be. The average level with A weighting, which is a, a, a curve that weights according to the human hearing system, uh, was right at 85 dB. Now that's, though, more credit to the theater than to the movie, right? Well, correct, correct. The, 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 the theater, which is was the TCL Chinese IMAX and in they're, Hollywood. And they're a pretty darn, you know, they're in Hollywood, they, they Timothy Chalamet could show up at any moment, so they're gonna have to do it pretty good. Right? <laughs> but I have to tell you, I I found it very loud. Yeah, it that's why just, I like watching at home. No sticky floor. My loud. popcorn's better, and I can turn it up and down. And there is, I will say this: there's a broad dynamic range in the movie. There is, and so that's I did true. find myself riding the volume sometimes. Some of the dialogue in the quiet passage is very quiet, and you need mm -hmm. to turn it up so you can hear it. So maybe yep. that maybe that was the issue, and then of yep. course when it gets loud, it gets really loud. Oh man, I, I measured a, a peak, the highest peak at 122 decibels, <laughs> and the minimum was like 63. So there was a huge range. HBO Max says a disclaimer on it: we will send you this movie in the highest quality picture and audio that your system can handle mm -hmm. dolby mm -hmm. vision dolby atmos if it can handle it and then yep. you know it'll degrade but i thought the picture was stunning it was gorgeous beautiful beautiful uh, and i i will probably go see it in a theater cuz i i think it's a very good job here's the thing i feel like times have changed now i don't know what the economics are Mm. But I really feel like the, a movie like this deserves not to be in a theater uh, on a big screen in two and a half hours, but uh, on a streaming service spread out over, like Game of Thrones, maybe eight years. Right. <laughs> you know, there's I think, enough, I, you know, there's enough material. There was, it was very frustrating that this is only the first half of the book. Oh, we should warn anybody who goes to see it. Yes. It ends in the middle. So you're going to be very... You don't even, there's things, you, uh, well, I, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, but there's at the stuff beginning, in you know this, the, the, the title says Dune. Part one. Part one. But they don't, they have not greenlit part two, which is another I reason. I know. This is a huge mistake. Oh, that's terrifying. Huge mistake. They should have sold this to Apple or a Amazon or to HBO or somebody. And As a two-part. As, well, or more or as a mo or as a series yeah 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 it could have been the next game of thrones it's yep, still it a brilliant been. movie but a lot yep. of the detail from the book is gone and it has it ends in the middle yeah and it may you know honestly unless everybody goes see it in the theater it, we may, may never see the second half which, which <laughs> so go see in the theater terrible. yeah leo laporte <laughs> the tech guy Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's because um, they're not working. So the Lord of the Rings, you had three stories, three books. Yeah, but they were all greenlit to begin with. Yeah, they were made at the same time, which also puzzles me because uh, I'm watching this thinking, I hope they shot the second half at the same time, but they didn't. It's not been shot. No, yet. they didn't. They didn't shoot one foot of film. So what so. if what if one of the primary actors kicks the bucket or something else happens? You know, very I mean, frustrating. Yeah. Uh, this is, in my mind, the mo the old movie industry, the last guard, this is their last hurrah. These people don't understand the future. They're mm -hmm. still making movies for a theater. COVID mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. kind of devastated that, and they think it's it's going to come back. It might, you know, it might, this might bring it back, but it, it doesn't do the, the, the material justice. That's my biggest problem. Well, except for the fact that you, you can't have an IMAX size theater at home. I would argue that I didn't miss much sitting in front of a 70-inch screen. Tell you know. me that when you after you go see it in IMAX. Okay. If you if you still feel that way after you see it in IMAX, okay, fine. I think the shifting aspect ratio would have pissed me off. I've seen I IMAX think. movies that did that. I can't remember mm -hmm. which it was, but that was a, so annoying. Mm. Uh, and then, then I saw one where it said, okay, put on your headsets now. Okay, take them off. That was really oh, well. Annoying. That was three D. That was so annoying. So yeah. annoying. Yeah. So I I think anything that takes you out of the film like that is is uh, is not good. Well, uh, I it, it didn't take me out of the film at all. Really? And I was looking for you it. You didn't notice that? Oh, now it's wide. Oh, now it's tall. No. 
Okay. Was that part I mean, of I, the storytelling or no. was that? Oh. It was what they shot on IMAX versus what they well, shot on yes, Alexa. Well, yes, it was kind of. Yeah, I disagree. It was Because it was the, the desert. Yeah. It was the it was the the big the big desert scenes on the planet were were in the IMAX aspect ratio and the more intimate scenes in uh, inside, you know, in some room or whatever Interesting. were more widescreen. Uh, that I think it contributed to the storytelling. I can give, yeah, I can give room if it's a matter of storytelling because sometimes they'll switch between, you know, an old school video for certain parts. Yeah, that's fine. That, that, that works, happens all but, the time. Yeah, uh, what there was a recent movie that just did that. It was interesting. They shot this on um, digital. It was shot on Alexa cameras. Right. Um, so I mean, it, and it, it looked, but in it the looked IMAX digital. aspect ratio, it looked digital a little bit. It didn't look. It, well, no, it didn't. Was look, it high it, frame yeah. rate? No, no, no. As far as I know, it was twenty-four frames per second. Oh, really? Interesting. Uh, which yeah, they did I mean, film I, it. They did film the desert scenes at Wadi Rum in uh, in uh, Jordan. That's that's correct. Mm -hmm. Shot in Norway for the castle scenes on Caladan. Yep. Was yep. shot in Jordan for the desert scenes. Yep. Uh, yep. It was shot in uh, also in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. for, I presume for the sand because the sand's better there than in Jordan. Jordan's for the rocks. <laughs> Right, and then right. uh, Hungary, I guess, for the other the other castles. I thought they really it was very true to the feeling of the spirit of the book. There were some great mm -hmm. moments, but mm -hmm. you know, some of the major characters in the book get killed right away, like they yeah. don't, they got nothing, and right. and I I just that's frustrating to me. Um, yeah, there's a lot of storylines that they just said, well, we can't fit that into two and a half hours, and I understand they couldn't, but does well, that that's always going to be the case, but. I must admit, I thought James Brolin as Duncan Idaho was great. Yeah, I but he's ja uh, doesn't you know? Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought Jason Momoa as uh, I've forgotten his his character's name was not very good. Uh, he yeah, he, sort of just, he, he sounded, was all right. He was just kind of contemporary. He was Jason kind Momoa. Of 20th century. Yeah. yeah, he was Jason Momoa. You knew who he was. <laughs> yeah, Gern, he was Gurney Halleck. Gurney Halleck. That's yeah. right. All right, you can stick around? You bet. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you today by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days. I don't know about you, but I'm always on my phone, whether it's uh, live streaming content, catching up with family on our Thursday weekly phone call, video call, or watching, uh, I don't know, your favorite podcast. I'm a big fan of uh, smart tech today, actually. There's no room, as I'm enjoying this phone, no room for fraudulent calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor. 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash activearmor for details. See, that's exactly my feeling. Don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> you gotta. You shouldn't make a two and a half hour movie out of a thousand page book. You need to. You need to spread it out. Yeah. I wonder. Not enough. I know the economics. Blockbuster films make hundreds of millions of dollars. This film, I think I read, cost one hundred fifty million to make. Uh, they'll make that back probably in the first couple of weekends in, in theatrical uh, uh, ticket sales. Um, but honestly, I think I think we, the times have changed. It's yeah. time to start uh, the series. Yeah, time to start start thinking about, uh, especially for big, you know, uh, the next big one. I think Foundation is a little bit of a flop. Uh, Apple TV Plus didn't quite get the. It's a little something's missing. But the next one's going to be Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. Right. I'm going through those books right now so that I can... 15 volumes. There's enough material. Yeah. And the story is, is apparently that Jeff Bezos said, I want a Game of Thrones for Amazon Prime. Ah. What are you going to get me? And they looked around, and this is the property they got. So, uh, But I would have liked to have seen that treatment for Dune. I think that made a pretty good series. But, you know... I guess maybe the economics, you can't make a, as big a movie. I don't know. And some people, as you said, are stuck in this old uh, old way of, of thinking in, in some ways. And so it's like, if you're going to do it, it has to be a movie. It has to be a film. Uh, whereas a lot of us are going, no, no, no. It's okay to spread this out and, and let and the I, story be told. I do think the, the money's there. Uh, Game of Thrones, I can't remember, it was $40 million an hour by the end of the season. I mean, there's enough... 
hello? <laughs> Have I really talked sad. too long? I think I've talked too long, and they're playing me off. We better take a call. 8888-ASK-LEO. Al is on the line from Roseville, California. Hi, Al. <laughs> uh, hello, Leo. Uh, how are you and Michael doing today? We are doing well. Thank you. It's Good. Micah. Just Okay. Uh, I have a... Um, is, we do a Zoom meeting for our genealogy group. Oh, neat. And, um, I need your recommendation for a uh, microphone... We have the uh, laptop on like a table, and then uh, there's like three people that are about two feet back, and I need a microphone that would uh, pick up their comments instead of the laptop mic. Oh, yeah. That's not going to sound great. Uh, no. the, the advantage of the laptop mic is it is what we call an omnidirectional mic. That's kind of what you want if you're going to have multiple people on a single mic. But the problem with an omnidirectional mic is it's omnidirectional picks up every noise in every uh, direction including echo in the room and most most laptop mics you can and i'm sure this is what you're hearing you can kind of hear the sound of the room it sounds a little echoey right a little big right, right. and uh, well we've all gotten a little bit used to that uh when i'm using a mic uh in a studio like this i'm close mic'd i'm talking right into a microphone so it's a much uh, i think it's a better sound and you don't hear the surrounding room tones and so forth um so it's going to be challenging to do one mic that picks up everything um you said four people uh three or four people yeah and uh, you you know if if you were if the speaker is willing to lean in a little bit that would certainly help um, I think probably a good mic for this would be something like the Blue Yeti, Y-E-T-I, from a company called Blue, uh -huh. just like the color. Uh, not too expensive. It has a switch on it that lets you choose different patterns, and this is one of the things that's going to help. You want the as you want the narrowest pattern that'll work for your three or four people. Uh, you, omnidirectional will be the worst, but it has a, what they call a cardioid or heart-shaped pattern that might be appropriate. Uh, for that, and you just have to make sure that everybody's kind of facing. Put the microphone in the middle. Everybody's facing the microphone. The nice thing about this is you can also move the laptop a little farther back. Maybe the camera can get a better shot. Plus, the noise that's coming from the machine won't be as audible. Uh, right. It's always better to have everybody have an individual mic. But if you, if you don't want to do that, and there are lots of good reasons not to do that, besides expense. You also have to control it. You, now you need a mixer, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got to use the mic properly. So take a look at the, I think the Blue Yeti. You agree, Micah? Yeah, a uh, thousand percent. The The fact that you can do that mode, if you had each person sitting on either side of the microphone, there's also a bi-directional mode. You've got multiple choices there. And the great thing about the Yeti too is that then if you need to use it for any other application, you've got all these different ways of using it. Uh, it comes with the ability to monitor the audio directly if you need to do that. It's just a a very versatile microphone that is easy to move around and, and position how you want to. It comes with its own stand and it's smart enough to uh, provide some support for whenever your hands are brushing up against the table and, and worried about any sounds getting Sounds like you've little. used one of these. I used to use a Yeti, yeah, before I upgraded to a newer one. This is a great microphone. And it's, it's hundred bucks. It's not, it's not super expensive. Uh-huh. Uh, now is that a USB? Yeah. And it plugs right into the computer. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good. Yeah, I think it's... You, you see, uh, in fact, once you uh, go to the page and look at it, you'll say, oh, yeah, I've seen that. You'll see it all the time. Podcasters use it. You see it on the news shows sometimes uh, if somebody's got a better microphone. Um, uh -huh. It's not my favorite microphone, but for this particular application, it probably is the best choice. They also have uh, software uh, that might help you kind of uh, uh, control the sound a little bit, get rid of background noise, things like that. So I think it's a hey, good well, choice. I, I appreciate your input on that. Yeah. Uh, is it a podcast everybody can listen to? or? Uh, no, it's uh, actually we've been, uh, well, during, during this virus, uh, we uh, had to go from uh, in, uh, in-house meetings to the uh, Zoom meetings. Yeah, and uh, yeah. we're still... Uh, we're still uh, working on it and trying to get, get the... Uh, it's really interesting uh, to see companies like Microsoft and Dell and Apple all realize, oh, <laughs> this is this is going to go on for a while. Oh, maybe we ought to adapt our products to to uh, fit the new Zoom economy. So you're, 
you're not alone. I mean, this is how business is happening these days. And actually, an interesting thing is happening because I suspect a lot of companies, I know our company even, so, you know, hey, this isn't working, this isn't so bad. Maybe we should keep doing this. You know, it's an opportunity to get people involved who wouldn't normally be there. I mean, one of the reasons we like Zoom is because we can have people in our meetings from far away. Um, so it works pretty well. Lawrence, Scotts Bluff, Nebraska is next. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, Leo. Welcome. Hey, thank you. What can I do for you? Um, well, first off, I just wanted to give you props for uh, your show. It's been on for a long time. I've been a long-time listener. And uh, I... Um, thank you. I have... I, have uh, I just want to say thanks for being really descriptive in your show i recently have went blind and it's really oh. nice to have a show where i can oh. listen to something and everything's really descriptive rather than somebody I'm, just i'm sorry lawrence that stinks no 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 that's fine it things happen and uh how you have know. you adjusted to it has it been difficult um you know it's been a little bit of a rough ride um you know it's just the past five years have been really crazy because you know it started off where I ended up with a couple of diseases, Sjogren's disease, and ended up with RA, and then I ended oh, up man. with cancer, and then I ended oh, up with God. this disease that's really super rare, and it's like, oh, my gosh, it's just... One more thing, huh? What did I do? Yeah. What did I do to deserve this? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So I just want to thank you, though, for, uh, you know, your shows have been really descriptive, and... Uh, thank you for reminding me, because I have to say, you know, we're we're all visual, but radio, one of the things I love about radio is there's no pictures. I did a lot of TV. I still do video with all of our shows, including this one. So it's easy for me to forget. But it is the beauty of this medium that it is, it's completely audio. Hey, if you can, I got to take a break, Lawrence. You can probably hear that tone that tells us local news is next. Stay on the line. I'll talk to you after the break. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Can you hang on, Lawrence? I'm sorry, we ran out of time. You were, you were being so nice that I had to take a break. You still there? Yeah. Oh, good. Just hang on, okay? Okay. We'll be back. It's going to be about six minutes. they got to do the local okay. news. Right. And meanwhile, this is also the time when I get a cup of coffee and Scott Wilkinson gets the run of the place. Woohoo! Woo-wee! <laughs> Let's go crazy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> you got eight minutes, Scott. Enjoy. Okay. Oh, there. Good. Thank you for putting that oh, yes. timer in the I like the to window. put that up for you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. I actually have my own timer here, but it has nothing to do with the uh, with the actual studio clock. So, thank you. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Very nice to see you all. Uh, I know Howard's going to uh, see Dune next Thursday at an IMAX laser. Uh, and I definitely recommend if you go to an IMAX... Probably most IMAX theaters are laser right now, but if they're not, if it's not near you, you should find one that is. Uh, and what that means is the projectors in the theater are illuminated. The light source are red, green, and blue RGB lasers uh, rather than uh, a lamp. Now, some of the older IMAX theaters might still be lamp-based, and uh, I definitely recommend you go to a laser an IMAX laser, and they're identified that way. And the reason is you're going to get a better dynamic range. Lamps have very poor black levels, generally speaking. Uh, so Dolby Cinema uses laser illumination. IMAX laser uses laser illumination. And you can get deeper blacks with lasers than you can with lamps. So, and, and dynamic range is, is pretty important. Um, I don't think that IMAX laser is as good dynamic range wise as Dolby Cinema. That is the best, but because and I, so I normally would go to an IMAX or rather a, a Dolby Cinema, and there's one right near my house. There's also an IMAX laser near my house, but I wanted to go to the biggest screen I could find, and that was in Hollywood. And uh, so I went to IMAX because the the movie was shot with so much IMAX 
aspect ratio. And I really wanted to see it the way Denis Villeneuve uh, intended it to be seen. That's the way he put it together. And so that's the way I wanted to see it. I'm a big fan of experiencing art as the artist intended rather than something else. And at Adobe Cinema, the whole, the, all the IMAX scenes would, would be cropped so that everything is the same aspect ratio. And although, yes, Leo said that he doesn't like it, it distracts him. Uh, if it's done well, it won't distract you at all. And it didn't distract me. And I was looking for it. <laughs> and I saw it, but it didn't bother me in the least. So uh, I will disagree with Leo on that particular point, at least in this case. Um, let's see. Phoenix Warp One is asking, what's the next science fiction series you'd like to see with the Denis Villeneuve treatment? Oh, that's a good question. What would be another good one? Um, Phoenix Warp One also, uh, condemned me or sentenced me to, <laughs> I have to read all the rest of the Dune books since I confused Duncan Idaho and Gurney Halleck <laughs> and who played them, which I did. I admit I, I got those backwards. Uh, Momoa played Duncan Idaho and, uh, James Brolin played Gurney Halleck. And I thought, I thought, um, James Brolin was great, um, and Momoa, not so much. He was being Momoa. Anyway, I like what would Baron I like? Harkonnen. Oh, Baron Harkonnen was great. Oh, Man, he's he, good. He's really good. Yeah. And and um, uh, David uh, or uh, Bautista. Bautista, yeah. Da yeah, played uh, uh, his chief, the Baron, his uh, cousin or nephew, his or, chief yeah. cousin or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was good too. There weren't very much. There wasn't very much of them. in Well, the that's movie the thing. Either. I'm telling you. It, it's, Annoying because you have all these great characters. Yeah, Josh Brolin, by the way. James Brolin was like James Brolin. Was that his dad? I wonder. James Brolin was his dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's frustrating. Shout it out is. Mapes. Like has one line. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's just frustrating. I agree. Um, I agree. But. Yeah, yeah. I I think your idea is great yeah, to uh, yeah. you know get the. Having ha, make it into a series that does better than Foundation. <laughs> Foundation is getting better. Somebody pointed that, out, and I agree, it is getting. I better. I haven't seen the last two episodes. I have to catch up. I haven't seen the. It's last starting two. to gel a little bit more. Okay, all right. Um, I'm trying to wait, <laughs> waste time here to see if I can think of the next series that I would want the Villeneuve treatment. And I have, and I will also say to waste a little more time that the Villeneuve treatment does have one problem in my opinion and that is sort of I, I some some reviewers call it soullessness it there there isn't a depth an emotional depth to it it's I thought Jessica stunned. was brought brought the soul Rebecca Ferguson yeah yeah I agree I, I agree. thought she brought although the she soul. was kind of perpetually well unhappy sci-fi is, is probably part of the problem with sci-fi in general is it's not about mm. characterizations it's, well, it can it's about be. plot it yeah it can be although now Villeneuve did also did Arrival which I thought was wonderful. really good yeah really good yeah but Blade Runner 2049 again it's kind of soulless well yeah that's because they're robots <laughs> and yet Blade Runner the original Blade Runner those robots had a lot they of had soul. soul yeah they really did so Say what you will. That uh, <clears throat> what are some what are some sci-fi epics that would be really good? Foundation, Dune. Anybody think, in the chat room got? I any think ideas? this has set the standard for a whole new generation. It I could, think it has. It could have yeah. been a Star Wars saga, except for the cheapness of the studios, and there's yeah. it's so annoying, just so yeah. annoying to me. Yeah, and not having a a part two guaranteed is really annoying. I'm I'm just I'm really disappointed at that. If they don't do it, then you know millions of us are going to be left hanging. I'm sure they'll do it, <laughs> but the I'm fact sure that they will too. the fact they didn't shoot it at the same time. By the way, this movie was going to pre pre uh, come out a year ago. Yeah. Had they greenlit it, yeah, we could have the second movie now. Yeah, it's true. It's absolutely true. It's. I think the movie industry sucks. 
<laughs> and I think creators no longer are want to make feature films, honestly. Well, that may be. I will tell you that releasing it at the same day and date on HBO Max or Plus or whatever it's called now, uh, I wonder, I, the contract must have been written differently than it was for, say, Black Widow, because you remember Scarlett Johansson. That's Disney, Disney Plus, Disney. so that's different. Um, so Warner announced at the beginning of the year that they were going to release the entire year's films on, on HBO. HBO Max because of COVID, but it will end right. at the end of this year. They made right. a deal with AMC starting uh, next year not to do that. So mm. the theater, the people who are most pissed off, of course, are the theater chains. Theater owners. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, actually, the theater box office has been decent for Dune. So. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope it's really good. Thank you, Scott. My pleasure. See ya. See you next. Oh, I won't see you next week. No, Halloween. Enjoy, oh, enjoy Mexico. Day of the Dead, man. I can't. I'm really jealous. I'm excited. I would, would love to be in Mexico for that. See ya. See ya too. Why, hey, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. What a week this was. We could talk about it if you want. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number, 888-827-5536, toll free in the U.S. or Canada, website techguylabs.com. That's free, and all the answers to all the questions show up there, thanks to our scribe, James DeRuvo. We also put audio and video uh, from the shows after the fact uh, at techguylabs.com. That's the website. Uh, what a week. So Apple um, kicks things off on Monday, announcing new laptops. New, by the way, new AirPods and new color Siri Home Pod Minis. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tuesday, Pixel 6 phone from Google. Big announcement. Looks very interesting. And then, of course, Wednesday, as I mentioned last week, Samsung said, Me too. I got something. You know what it turned out to be? You can tell them, Micah. What, what did Samsung... <laughs> it was it was awful. It was it was absolutely awful. It was just the ability to customize a device that you already had. <laughs> New colors. Color flip phones. Yeah. Woo! And there was one other thing but I'm it's escaping me because it was even less exciting than that which was already not very exciting. I just felt like they said, "Oh, oh, we want to be a part of this. We'd like to we'd like yeah, to have let's our join event. the join the team." Apple, I think, blew it out of the park with the uh, M1 Pro and the M1 Max, their new chips, which look incredibly powerful. The, 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 you know, and of course, there's Apple bashers. The worst the I, I could Apple basher I could find said, well, I think Tom's hardware was looking at graphics performance. Now, this is a laptop uh, running uh, a video editing program from Adobe, not even from Apple, called Premiere. And they said, well, the laptop isn't quite as fast as the top-of-the-line desktop computer running Adobe Premiere. Desktop. Desktop. <laughs> In other words, this is a laptop with 21 hours battery life that runs almost as well as the highest-end desktop computer doing video editing. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Sounds impressive. And, of course, Apple did not announce, maybe a little disappointing, uh, the, any desktops on Monday. But the Mac Mini, which is due, f I think, to do a pro version. The iMac, for sure, 32-inch iMac is expected. And the Mac Pro, those will all come probably next year. I don't know how early next year, maybe the spring. But uh, so I, I think Apple's strategy now is a little, little bit clear. They did the low-end devices a year ago. They did laptops this year and remember they did say this was going to take two years to yes, do this whole thing transition. and they're going to do their highest end pro devices uh next year desktops and then they'll be completely moved over off the intel line you know it's interesting because intel basically wo has, has been waving a white flag saying okay you win they've decided not to really do much more chip designing <laughs> They're going to become what's called a foundry. They have these billion, multi-billion dollar factories. Uh, the, the sad thing is our, our butt in the U.S. is getting kicked by the Taiwan Semiconductor uh, uh, Manufacturing Company, TSMC, partly subsidized by the Chinese, the Taiwan government. Uh, 
I shouldn't say Chinese government. Now get me in trouble. Get us banned in, in uh, mainland China by the Taiwan government, and uh, and doing really amazing stuff. That's who makes Apple's chips, and Intel's looking kind of a little laggardly. So they've decided to not worry so much about chip design. What the world needs, what America needs, is a good American chip manufacturing uh, business, and so that's what they're going to do. There, and in fact. Their new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, even said, and I hope we can make Apple's chips, perhaps. <laughs> and you know what? That's not as far-fetched as it sounds. They have to obviously step up their technology. But that's what happened with TSMC. When you get a dozen different companies coming in, making chips uh, with different needs, different technologies, you start to really improve your technology across the board. And that's exactly what happened with TSMC. And they now can make these new Apple chips, which are on a what we call a five nanometer process. That's the, the smaller the process, five nanometers, five billionths of a meter, the more efficient, the faster, the, the cooler these chips are. So five nanometer, and they're going to go to three nanometer next. I suspect that might be next year for Apple. And Intel's still stuck at 10 and 11 nanometers. They're at much bigger processes. So that's why their lunch is getting eaten. Maybe that was a little too technical. Anyway, I'm I'm impressed by what Apple is up to. These chips show that Apple can design the whole thing, and that's their advantage. Hardware, software, processors, the whole thing. So what was their advantage on the iPhone is now their advantage on uh, computing. Uh, I was also, also very impressed with what Google's going to do, because guess what? Google's designing its own chips. Gee, I wonder why. So Tensor. Google, the Tensor chip. Google announced the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro using their... New chips. We think they're being manufactured by Samsung in South Korea, uh, probably with some Samsung technology. But the Tensor technology is mostly machine learning, artificial intelligence. And they're going to do some, I think, you know, judging by the announcement, which always looks good. Let's not forget, these are just long commercials for these products. Uh, but judging by the announcement, the Pixel 6 looks like it's going to really benefit from that, not just... Uh, with photography, and it looks to be the best. I mean, I've been starting to see some sample images, and whew, these Pixel 6 images are incredible. Uh, but also in the um, things like tra uh, instantaneous translation. Uh, and I was, I'm really hoping, because I'm going to Mexico uh, next week for the Day of the Dead, I'm really hoping I can take this Pixel 6 with me. Yes. It's supposed to come... Like the day I leave, I'm just wait. I I, I, heard, I read that you were going to be taking a Pixel Six with you. Well, it's up to uh, my colleague, that, our colleague. That has been Jason said I can I can have his. Not only Jason, but uh, Google. The, the, yes, Google said. So we had a review unit in house, uh, reviewed by our colleague, our mutual colleague Jason Howell, who's the host of a show all about Android. Of course, Google wanted him to have it. Uh, good, so I can I can steal his phone now. His review is embargoed. He can't review it till Tuesday. So I'm going to grab, he's going to review it. I'm going to drive over about seven in the evening after he does that <laughs> review and say, give it to me. I'm going to take it and I fly out the next morning at 7 a.m. So it's going to be a tight turnaround. I'm excited to see the photos you take with it. Well, we're going, you know, so we're doing uh, Day of the Dead, which is a lot of stuff at night, right? Uh, unfortunately, Oaxaca, the town where we'll be, has closed. Uh, normally, there, people go to the cemeteries to have picnics to honor their ancestors. Mm -hmm. The cemeteries are closed due to COVID, as are big public uh, events. So we aren't going to be able to see that, but we're doing a number of private events. I'm hoping I'll get some good pictures of costumes and the the, the candy skulls. And yeah. There should be some marigolds or everywhere. It should be beautiful. So it'll be a good uh, opportunity. We have a colleague who every year goes to Disneyland with a new phone to take pictures. I'm going to Oaxaca. How about that? 8888 Ask Leo. Uh, those are those are the big announcements from the week. Mm -hmm. And then that next week, as I mentioned, Facebook is going to announce its new name. Can't wait. Can't wait. That should be really interesting. Altria, <laughs> as you said. Altria. I, I like it. Not a bad name. It's already taken. <laughs> Unfortunately. I really, I'm, I'm really wondering what they're going to do. It's, it's very, it's fascinating to me to take a cup. I mean, but you pointed out that Google did this and called the because Google had so many businesses, they decided to have a, a larger company called Alphabet that Google and other businesses are under the umbrella of Alphabet. Maybe Facebook will do that. I don't know why they didn't choose Kitchen Sink. Yeah, kind of is. <laughs> that would we'll throw it all in. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo is the phone number. 
Micah, you ordered one, a sort of Seafone Pixel 6. I did. I'm looking forward to trying it. I ordered one too, but it won't be here till the day I leave. Mine isn't coming until November 13th through the 16th. So, and I got like the most base model, the 128 gigabyte Pixel 6. You didn't get the Pro? No, no. Why not? Because I'm I don't spend that much time in Android. I spend enough time to want to stay up to date with it, but it's not like I am Mr. Two Phones. So I just ordered the. It the is basement. hard. I got I'm Mr. Three or Four Phones. <laughs> yeah, and it isn't ideal having to switch between, especially because most of the people I talk to are on iMessage. It just gets complicated. Yeah. So I just went with no, the base I model. Can't, at this point, I really can't give up the uh, iPhone because I'm so tied into that ecosystem. So I don't. <sighs> but what I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> uh oh. So I didn't see this tech therapy. This Slack from uh, Jason. I, I take it it was in Slack. He yes. I can have it. So you're supposed to be taking the pro model with you. And uh, so he'll be able to uh, review and talk about the base model. And then when you get back. No, then, that's not right. He should, he should review. But you could use that telephoto lens to get those nice marigolds, as you mentioned. Google is Google about you taking. Okay. Oh, I feel bad. Okay. 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 Well, I feel bad. I feel like he should review the six for uh, the pro for uh, all about Android. I don't want to usurp that. Maybe they'll get some early talk about it. He says he's going to just review the Plain 6, and then when I bring it back, he'll do the 6 Pro. But he's going to use it for a year, so I guess he's happy that he gets to keep it. And then I, by then, mine will have come mm -hmm. in Sunset Orange or whatever the hell. Creamsicle. <laughs> and, uh, Basketball. And I'll just swap them. But yeah, mostly, I don't, I don't even want to use it as a phone. I just want to use it for the camera. Yeah. I can't really use it for a phone because I'm Google Fi and I, I'm not going to put Fi on that. I don't know if I can even put Fi on that phone and then move it to another phone. I don't know how that would... I don't know. I don't know. Stressful. So stressful. This is why I don't do loaners. It's just so much easier just to buy it and then you own it and then you don't have to say, well, I don't know. <sighs> right. Okay. He says, I will shift into the Plane 6 at that point since it is, after all, somewhat different. That'll give me some experience with that model while you're gone. And then I can... Oh, I see what you're saying. So he still does, does his pro review. I'll have lots of pictures. That I'm, I'm really interested in the night mode because I think a lot of what we're going to be doing is at night. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the um, AI sort of conversation feature. And it'd be right? good to translate. Yeah. Because I my Spanish... As uh, Professor Laura will tell you, it has not really progressed. Hey, let me talk to you. I, you know what's funny? On the, my Instagram, I've been seeing a lot of ads for Nareva. Oh, I yeah, know them. They must know I'm a fan. Nareva is a great solution for anybody who, you know, you, we're all getting back to work, wants to get a, a conference room with great audio. Audio is so important. This is my kind of my mantra as a broadcaster. Uh, but it's really true of, of uh, conference calls, too. Good audio makes a difference between fatigue, exhaustion, boredom, and something that can really work for you. So that's why it's so important that you get good audio in your conference rooms, especially these big, mid-size, and large meeting rooms. And maybe for that reason, you've been looking at a pro solution, pro AV. But I got to tell you, this is not necessary. This is a very expensive thing to do these pro av solutions they're gonna you're gonna have multiple components you're gonna have mics you're gonna have speakers you're gonna have cables everywhere you're gonna have to bring technicians to install it and configure it to spec it, it might take days to install and we we've all gone to businesses where they have giant conference rooms with all sorts of fancy stuff tens of thousands of dollars per room why do that when you can get the best audio from a simple soundbar you install yourself, it's Nureva, N-U-R-E-V-A. If you've got 25 by 25 foot room, 
One sound bar will be fine, speaker bar. Two bars cover a space of 30 by 50 feet. You can install it yourself. If you can install a sound bar, you can do it. Two screws, one cable, 30 minutes. And this is the beauty of it. They've got a patent on something they call the microphone mist technology that puts thousands of virtual microphones throughout your conference room. Uh, it's computational audio, really. And it, the, the beauty of this is these pro AV systems, you know, you, you've got to have little marks on the desk where everybody has to sit. They have to face the same, the right way into the microphone. And by the way, after each meeting, sanitize, wipe down, all of that stuff. With Nareva, it doesn't matter which way they're facing. doesn't matter how they socially distance. You're going to get great audio from everybody in the room thanks to this patented microphone mist technology. It constantly calibrates. They, uh, If you have multiple rooms, you'll love the Nareva console. It's a simple, intuitive platform that lets you monitor, manage, adjust, and scale your fleet of systems from anywhere. No training involved. It's easy. You'll be able to figure it out in minutes. I just think Nareva is a, is a no-brainer for anybody with a large conference room and who wants great sound. And I got to reiterate, sound is everything in that conference, that meeting. Uh, it's the That's why we have Zoom fatigue, bad audio. So, so easy to do. You can do it yourself. They have a great console, the Nareva console, a platform that lets you monitor, manage, adjust, and scale your fleet of systems from anywhere. Great for multiple rooms and a fraction of the cost of the Pro AV system. Sound great, works great, easy to install, easy to use, no training required. If you're thinking about Pro AV, can I get you to think about Nareva? At least learn more. N U R E V A dot com slash twit. Nareva dot com slash twit. It simplifies and improves the audio for your conference rooms. I think it's a great solution. Nareva dot com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support of the Tech Guy podcast. And now, on with the show. Oh, Lawrence. Did I forget Lawrence? I think Lawrence went away, but uh, Lawrence, if you're still listening, uh, we have your contact information. I will be reaching out to help you with your question. Look at you. Aren't you a good person? I feel terrible. He said such nice things. Very kind, And Lawrence. then I forgot about him. And that's Leo Laporte, they tech guy. Ooh, get ready. Micah Sargent's here, the boy wonder. I'm going to call you that, okay? I like it. You don't mind? I don't mind oh, it. Because shoot. you... I thought that would annoy you. There are some people out there who <laughs> uh, make a few too many jokes about age, but uh, you lead with respect and... Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't feel, uh, what is it, disrespected by you saying I don't that. think I'm alone in thinking that this show just needed a younger voice on it because, you know, the youngs are doing things like they're using that... Uh, AOL Instant Messenger and ICQ to talk with one another. And I just feel like I don't know what's going on with today's Utes. <laughs> the Utes. 8888 Ask Leo. Skyler is on the line from Cooper City, Florida. Hello, Skyler. Hi, Leo. How are you guys doing today? I am great. How are you? Real good, thanks. Real good. So um, I need, I'm in, in a bit of a pickle here. Uh, what I've been doing is backing up my Windows 10 computer using RoboCopy to an external 8 terabyte drive. Oh, good. And what? Yeah, so it's been going pretty good until I started to try to access the files. Oh, no. Um, yeah, I format it as with NTSF. Yeah. Thinking that would be the best way to go. Yeah. And... Um, and as time goes on, I have a tendency to reform my, my computer when it gets slow. I just want to do a cleanup. Yeah. And when that happens, I guess the uh, SID changes, and I can no longer have access to some of the files. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay. Yeah. I know yeah. what's going on. So, so let me do, let me uh, interpret. <clears throat> <laughs> Sometimes we get a little geeky here. RoboCopy is actually a free program that comes with Windows. And it's kind of a sad thing because Windows file copying is so terrible. They Microsoft had to offer a command line utility that does it right, including verifying uh, to make sure that the stuff got copied. So I know your backup's good because that's one of the things RoboCopy does. NTFS, the NT file system, is the default file system for Windows, so that's fine. That was the correct choice. Your Windows 10 install or your Windows 11, if you move to that, will use NTFS as well. But it sounds like you're having an ownership issue. If you're uh, an admin 
uh, on your machine and you copy stuff over, it retains the permissions uh, that you had when you copied it over. Now, when you format and start all over again, you're you're still an admin, but you're a different admin. You're not the same one. So you want to regain ownership of those files. And it's not a hard process. You could totally do this, but that's what's going on, I think. It's, it's saying you, you, you don't own these files, you can't see them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only thing it's a kind of a pain is to do it quickly. It's very easy to claim ownership of any file by just in File Explorer, right-clicking on the file. You select Properties. It's in the Security uh, tab under Advanced, and you can change the owner. But the problem is that's one file. <laughs> I'm thinking you got more than one. But that's the first thing I would do is just do this with one file. Just to just to just to make sure that that's what's going on. Uh, so again, it's it's right click on the on any of the files in your backup, any of them that you can't open. Go to uh, the properties security tab. Press the advanced button for special permissions or advanced settings, and then you can say, "Hey, uh, this is mine." Uh, I think then you can do that folder by folder. I'm pretty sure you can, which will then... So do it with one file. See if you can then open it after you get it back, if you reclaim it. And, okay. And then, and then after that, uh, you should be able to do it, I think, just clicking a folder. Okay. I, th I okay. think that that will change them all within a folder. If not, you there's certainly... You're already using the command line with RoboCopy, so you're clearly comfortable with that. There may be... A, a way to do it with a command line that can do a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, if I can get it to work first, uh, maybe I can use something with PowerShell. But yeah, I'm sure there is. You know, yeah. you know, I just don't know what it is. If you were on a Linux box, for instance, uh, it's easy enough to change the ownership or to change the permissions on a file with a global command that will change everything. And so, I bet you there's something like that in PowerShell. Yeah. Okay. Would it would it be better to maybe uh, remove all restrictions and just have it open to everybody? You could do that. Um, you know, if no one else uses your computer, right? You don't really care, right? Right. Yeah, it's okay because these are these are going to be files that are going to my kids for pictures oh. and videos. And yeah, you'll stuff. want to do that then. Yeah. So yes, that's one of the choices. Is everyone? You could say owner. You could say administrators, or you could say everyone, and that's the most permissive. And you can give everyone full control. And then, yeah, everybody will be able to access it. It's no longer uh, hidden. I'm sure there's a PowerShell command. In fact, I'm sure somebody okay. will come up with it in the chat room and we can paste it in the show notes. Oh, that'd be great. It just, there's no chance I'm going to lose complete access to this. No. These files. No, no. You can always get access back. Uh, which kind of begs the question, why even do this in the first place if it's so easy to take it back, right? Uh, I guess the presumption is, and this is true on most multi-user systems, if you've got root access, if you're an administrator, well, okay, you should be able to do anything. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're right. It, uh, you know, if people are listening and saying, hey, you shouldn't be able to do that, you're right. I mean, it is, it is a security f kind of loophole. That's the word. Mm -hmm. But they know a lot. This happens so often that they know they've got to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Here's the command line tool. Out of sync knows it in our chat room. The command line tool for permissions is C A C L S. You're kidding. <laughs> What's that short for? C <laughs> Thank you, Microsoft. C A C L S. So if you did uh, uh you know, if you read the docs on C A C L S, uh there'd probably be a simple one line that you could do. Okay. That's, very good. That's a take ownership command. Oh, it says, oh, sorry, this command has been deprecated. Please use I-C-A-C-L-S. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm looking, and yeah, you can you can do it. Uh, you can do it re what they call recursively, which means go through all the folders. So that's the, okay. the I-C-A-C-L-S. That's so funny. You know, you know, deprecated means, oh, don't use this. We're, we're not going to support this for very long. What do they do? They renamed it I-C-A-C-L-S. Maybe that's what they should call it, iFacebook. Mm, clever. Sure. Yeah, that's the tool you want. Thank you, Addison, in our chat room. Appreciate it.
Oh, I get it. Uh, access lists. Uh, yeah, that's it. ACLS is access lists. Change access lists. That's the mnemonic. I don't know why the I. Yeah. One, one more question, if I sure. could, Leo. Yeah. Uh, so on the external drive, would I be better off formatting as like FAT32 and so I can avoid this issue with writes in the future? No, no, no. I would use NTFS. Much more reliable. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I guess uh, FAT32 might avoid this problem because it doesn't even care about permissions. But yeah, I wouldn't. I would use NTFS. Much more reliable. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Johnny Jet travel guru coming up. So AL, ACLs are access control lists. So CACL is change access control list. I don't know what the I is for, and I don't know what the S is for. <laughs> but that's the mnemonic. Let's see here. Uh, required displays ACLs of... Okay, changes ACLs of specified files. Slash T. Ah, here we go. Slash T changes ACLs of specified files in the current directory and all subfolders. So if you do this in the root of your external drive with the slash T... It should change them all. And then you have to do slash G user colon permission. So you do slash G space everyone colon F for full control. Essentially removes uh, ownership. It's an interesting question. How could you how could you do this without assigning ownership? Uh, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a Windows guru. That's all. It's ninety six thirty. I know I never have had to do that. I it just doesn't come up. Hello there, Mister Johnny Chen. <laughs> Hello. I wasn't sure you're speaking to me or not. I'm speaking to the world famous Johnny Chen. <laughs> How are you? I've been sick. Actually. Oh, you got that thing that you're... Uh... Yes, my kids had last week, and actually my son was sick again last night, and they haven't gone out. So. Oh, crap. But uh, we, my wife and I both got PCR tests, and they came back negative. So it's just, uh, you know, cold. Flu season. Yeah. I got my flu shot. I got mine too, but... Yeah. Cold. What are you going to do? So, yep. So who's my travel? Who's no idea dot dogs? Whose blog is that? That's great. I'm not sure. I just I you just found it. I, I don't. I I really dislike feigned surprise uh, people using that. Uh, and so that's so the picture you like to that, uh, share. That yeah, that blog is a, a good talk about feigned <laughs> surprise and how it stops people from asking questions. And what isn't worth the characters oh, that care. you type out? No, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. He's right. I should have known that. I don't even know if that's feigned surprise. That's it's real surprise. Uh, there is a user, everyone. That's me. So that's the slash G, everyone, colon. Global? Yeah, global. So, uh, yeah, we lost Lawrence. I feel terrible. I forgot about him. So how are you, JJ? I'm doing all right. Just trying to get Besides my voice Besides being back. sick as a dog. Well, I'm not sick as a dog, but I do have an upper chest infection. I'm sorry. Which sucks. Is that an airplane window on your chest? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, I see. Nice. I thought it was an Among Us uh, imposter at first. Oh, yeah, it does. It does look like that, yeah. See, I'm hip. I'm with it. Yeah, I'm not, you. because I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, see? <laughs> see, I'm with it. Among Us is a game that got very popular for a little bit of time, and cue all the people who are saying, it's still popular, uh, where it was a simple game, so you could play it on almost any platform, and the, the whole conceit of the game was that among this group of people, among us, there are a few people who are imposters, and you try to figure out who the imposters are, and then you can vote <laughs> to eject them out of the uh, spaceship that you're all on, because you're all supposed to be working together to keep the spaceship running. Uh, but there are people who are going around and sabotaging 
sabotaging the different things inside. And uh, the, the imposters have the ability to eliminate actual players. And then as the rounds go on, it becomes a little bit easier to figure out who the imposters are. So it's a, it's a fun little game that you can play with a big group of people, a small group it's of people. It's a social game. It's basically yes. werewolf. It is werewolf. Yeah, it's werewolf. Yeah. Yep. Werewolf's in a spacecraft. Uh, going to Oaxaca, Johnny? I, I heard. Very I excited. Although uh, Amira excited sent me you. an email saying the local authorities, probably for political reasons, because they are green, uh, in the COVID tier green, uh, have closed the cemeteries and all public celebrations. So, But we weren't going to yeah, do those good. anyway, apparently. She said, don't worry, we have... Here we have a do. He's been everywhere. He's traveling everywhere, mostly to the doctors to get uh, prescriptions. <laughs> He's got a family that has a cold Johnny Jet. Isn't it funny? You stay off the airplanes, you wear a mask, you wash your hands, and you get a cold. Yes. I'm sorry, it's, Johnny. It is what it is. I get to hang out in bed with my kids and watch That's TV. That's not so and, bad, is it? No. 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 That's my a wife makes thing. soup, homemade soup every day. Oh. Now. I'm like, Man, you know what? I, I might even fake a cold just for that. That's good. <laughs> So Johnny joins us every week to talk about travel, the technology of travel, how to travel like a rock star, thanks to technology. And we are getting back. We are getting back on the horse. We are. We sure are. I feel and like actually, I just, I don't want to be premature, but just feel like things are getting getting better. I, I feel that way too, although I do read some stuff that's going on in Europe, which is a little scary. Um, Germany is suddenly uh, Germany, in UK, crisis. Russia. Um, so... You know, right now it's good, so take it while you can. And, you know, 2.1 million people went through security checkpoints yesterday. What? Uh, those numbers. That's like that's a, bigger than normal, isn't it? That, well, the biggest during the pandemic, I think, was 2.3, almost mm. 2.3. But keep in mind that usually the busiest day during the pandemics are Sundays. So we'll find out on Monday. But what would be like non-pandemic, like Two years the ago. Lar the largest ever was almost 2.9 the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So we're close. Day. We're close. Yeah. Well, to keep in mind that November 8th is when they're going to start opening up to foreigners. So numbers are definitely going to jump in a couple of weeks. So one of my tips this week in my newsletter was, you know, be, be prepared, be prepared for uh, Thanksgiving because that's when the, uh, the mandate kicks in. So every person supposed to be vaccinated who's working for the government by the 22nd of November. I think Thanksgiving's the 25th. Do you well, think guess there'll what? be walkouts? Well, only 40% of the TSA is vaccinated. Yeah. And so, so the rest may walk. Wasn't, weren't there walkouts with uh, with Southwest and some other well, airlines? And they weren't walkouts and they definitely did not say it was official, but Southwest has actually won this battle because the pilots... The um, the airline just dropped their plan to you know put all unvaccinated staff on unpaid leave. Yikes! Because the pilots were like, "Well, you got nowhere to go. You're gonna, you're not going to have an airline without pilots." So yeah, I think um, the pilots. So what do you think? One, what, what's going to happen with the TSA? Uh, uh, that's a lot I mean, of people. Uh, if you're traveling over Thanksgiving, I would, you know, definitely go early, and I would make sure you have clear. You know, to get through security faster, at least cut the line. There may be a shortage of TSA personnel. There's already a shortage right now. Oh. TSA, I think, was down like 6,000 people as it is. So there's even going to be a bigger shortage if, this, if they don't push this mandate. Yikes. Get to the airport early. Get to the airport early. Also, you just, yeah, I just yesterday, uh, LAX announced they're partnering with uh, United Airlines and the TSA to come up with a place where you can reserve a space in the line. So you can speed through LAX uh, between 6.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. you bum off the street and say, would you wait in line for me? No, 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 no. It's all tech. It's all, it's all technology, technology, huh? Yeah. So you reserve just reserve a place in line. Tw 24 hours in Before you even go. A 15-minute slot. So you say, I'm going to be at the airport at 1. So you make a slot, a time for 1.15 or whatever. And you this just cut the line. You say, no, no, it's my time. I'm well, Seattle Airport has something already, and Orlando is coming out with it. I think they so. Just this is LAX right now, uh, as as well. Only at United Terminal oh. Seven and Eight, um, and it's only through January 18th. But listen, 
and it's only in the morning till 1 p.m., but it will help. <laughs> That's a lot of restrictions. Okay. It is a lot of restrictions. So I think there, it's just a test pilot. Let's see how it goes. Let's hope they expand because I do think it's a good idea. And you don't have to do it online. At first, you could show up to the airport. If the security line is really long, you can just scan the QR code. They'll, they'll make a reservation for you if there's a slot available. I hope and then it's, you can go hang out. I hope it's better than the DMV's to... appointments here in California. You make an appointment at the DMV. And then somebody shows up and they take them first and then you go or they take another person and then you, it's crazy. So I hope they honor these appointments and that you don't get stones thrown at you. Yeah, that's you my say, concern. It's Everybody's, my turn. It's my turn. Right. I want right. I'm, I, I have a reservation. See? Yeah, sure, And there's a 15 buddy. minute window. There's a 15 minute window on this you one. You got to get there on time. But, yeah. but. The DMV for me actually really worked well. When last time I went was about two years ago. Oh yeah, my license. Okay. <laughs> as long as you make your uh, appointment. If you don't make an appointment, you're screwed. Well, that's what I thought, but it, maybe it's just the Petaluma DMV. But now they don't. They take everybody, even the, it, you know, it just shows up. They alternate gotcha. with appointments, and people walk in the door. Yeah, I've been told to just show up, yeah. not to do the yeah, appointment. Yeah, there's no point. And it's, okay. and being wow. Well, well that's maybe that's different. local. Maybe that's just local. That's why we're Southern California. Yeah. Yeah, you're better in Southern California. I know. <laughs> the Dodgers. I'm kidding. Um, I know these are fighting words. Oh, don't. Oh. So, Slowly some, I turn. <laughs> so some more big news. Uh, SkyWest Airlines had an outage this week, a couple of days ago, and they're still battling it. So far, they've canceled 124 flights today, and it's still <gasps> early. Yikes. And they've delayed over 200 so, you know, if you're flying a, a regional jet on Alaska, American, Delta, or United, that's Sky West. You probably don't even realize that because it shows, you know, the, um, the regular airline. Uh, so make sure you, again, pack your patience. Always have a plan B. And some good news this week. Hawaii announced that they are welcoming back tourists. I think I mentioned it on your um, yeah. Podcast two weeks ago, Aloha. I said I heard that the, the governor is going to yeah. uh, come out with an announcement. He, sure enough, he did. Nice. And f November first, fully they're encouraging fully vaccinated travelers to come to the islands, and that's great news. Yay! I love Hawaii. So uh, you're rooting for the Dodgers, huh? Tonight, of, of course. I'm, I'm, Tonight, you know what? I'm a Yankee fan. My least favorite team used to be the Red Sox. It's now the Houston Astros. So it was the first time in my life I was rooting for the Red Sox, but I'm just rooting for either the Dodgers and then if they lose, then the Atlanta. <sighs> but We're, I do like Dusty Baker, who was a long time yeah, me too. giant. Yeah. We're talking baseball for people who are going, what are, what are they talking about? It's a sport yeah. thing. You just would understand. It is. Um, anything I should know? Because you know I'm going to be getting on a big LJ airliner on Wednesday early in the morning. Flying to Houston and then from Houston to Oaxaca. Anything bringing, I should know? Are you bringing a test back? Are you bringing a test with you so you can get back into the U.S.? Because you're going to need a to you test. You take back. a test there, though, right? You do, but you can also bring one with you. You can oh, go to oh, you, a Walgreens just or get it, and, and they'll buy. take that to get back in? You can bring it with you and can do the video chat while you're in Mexico. Otherwise, in Mexico, they have them everywhere. Your resort should be offering you a, a test yeah, for free. Yeah. But so I could, oh, so I could go get a drugstore test. And then that would be acceptable to come home you, from Mexico. You pack it with you. I know. I don't you, do the test now because that's not. Right. It's it has to be 70, 72 hours. Three, three you days, actually. Yeah. Well, that's the same, isn't um, it? No, no, it's not. They, they've they actually clarified it. it's not 72 hours. It's three days to help you. It actually gives you some more time depending on what time your flight is. I know 72 hours is three days. But if you read the, uh, the fine print and they, and they say that in it. Three days. Like, I said the same thing. Okay, I'm confused. In fact, that actually confuses me, but okay. <laughs> no, it's not 72 hours. It's three days. What was I the video know. chat part? You said video chat while you're doing the test? Yes, yeah, so some tests you have to... Um, chat you with know, a doctor? With, talk, they, they have to see you do it. Uh, and they oh, to you verify, because otherwise you can sure take it now. Make sure you're swabbing properly. Yeah, you got to swab properly. Uh, yep, and then yeah. you show your license. Oh, wow. So, well, maybe I'll go... How much are the drugstore tests? You know, if you can get them, I think they're only around $26. Okay. 
Right. But again, they've been short because. But you're the, saying um, the U.S. will accept those rapid tests, not they I do. Have, I don't have to get a PCR to get back. You don't need country. a PCR to get into Canada. You need a PCR, but not to get back into the U.S. Well, I, God willing, I'll be flying back into the U.S. and not Canada. Yeah. You never know these days we could be rerouted. Johnny Jet, hey, you got to follow him. His website johnnyjet.com. Get the newsletters; they're free. Follow him on Twitter, Johnny Jet. Instagram, Johnny Jet. And join them each week right here. Thank you, Mr. Johnny Jet. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Dr. Mom says it's to give the doctors a laugh while we watch people try to self swab. <laughs> <laughs> this is deep enough. No, deeper. Is it? No, is this is deep enough. No, deeper. Ah! Um, Johnny, you don't have, uh, we don't have a uh, show next week. I, I heard that. So we're in so. reruns. That's great because it's Halloween. Uh, yeah, got exactly. Two little ones, and we got parties planned. No trick or treating, I guess, though, huh? No, there's trick or treating. Is there? Def definitely. I guess you're already wearing a mask, so it's okay. and you're outside, so yeah. you know they're not going to go. They're going to do it safe, but there's trick or treating. And you Last get little bottles of hand sanitizer, and you go. Yeah, that's the, that's like the uh, that's the gift. That's like the Reese's peanut butter cup this year. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you wake up, you're like, you, you look in the bag, you're like, oh my God, I got a Reese's peanut butter cup. Now you're like, oh my God, I got hand sanitizer. So That's Dr. Great. Mom said something. Apparently, if you have a positive PCR test in Los Angeles, you can go to the Mark Centers and get um, monoclonal antibody treatment immediately. How much does it cost, Dr. Mom, though? I mean, those used to be extremely expensive. I guess they've been cloning them. Hardcore. Yes, when I put on Twitter that I took a PCR test, she's like, if it's positive, do that. And I was like, Oh, wow. she told you. Yeah, nice. It's free. What? That's awesome. God bless America. <laughs> free. We don't have tests. We don't have PPE, but we've got free monoclonal antibodies to all comers. Was that your Irish accent that I heard? For God bless America. <laughs> yes. yes. Faith and Begara. Oh, those Americans are crazy. Um, that's cool. Is that uh, only in Southern California, Dr. Mom, or is that statewide, nationwide? So you knew about that, Johnny, but you didn't. I you, did, yeah. because of Dr. Mom. Because of Dr. Mom, yeah. Because she tweeted me. That's But neat. fortunately, I don't, have, uh, I don't have COVID. Yes, right. Knock, so. knock on wood, neither do knock I. Knock on wood, yeah. My fear, actually, Lisa's fear, she said we should test before we go, because what if we have it, we have silent COVID right now, we go to Mexico, there's no test to go there, and then we can't get out because we have COVID. It's not a bad idea. See, she's smart. So I'll go to the drugstore, I got two. Yeah. Need one now? It's good to practice anyway. I think I think some of them come in packs of two as well. And All right. It's also a good idea to bring two just in case you messed up the first time good. or it comes back positive and you think it's a false positive. Point. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I don't. Is it going to be a regional jet? It's to Houston no. to Oaxaca. No, that'll be a nice. Uh, maybe. What airline are you on? United. United. No, I don't think so. It'll be all right. It's fine. I don't care. I like I like Embraer. Embraers are great. I can't say Embraer, but I yeah, like. No, them. They're, they're, you know what's so great about them? They're two and two, so there's no middle. Exactly. Seats. Exactly. So I used to hate them, but I actually I've grown to love them. Although I just prefer the main line because I think the pilots are are more experienced. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, I do have an American Express Platinum card so I can go to the Centurion Lounge because yeah, we have a three and a half hour layover. Definitely. And the one in the, oh, you're going to Houston. Houston. Okay, I haven't been to the one in Houston. I-A-H. Yeah. But uh, user 4653 says the uh, Centurion Lounge in Houston is very nice. All the Centurion lounges are really nice. And we can get in with a, and with they have a really platinum good card? The, the, the platinum card, correct. That's it? Yep. As, as long as you're platinum. Sometimes I'll go to a, one of them and they'll say, I've got a platinum card. They say, yeah, you want to charge charge it? <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> that's a, that's that's a, a phony deal. Those are the uh, That's not a priority. Centurion. Okay. Yeah, the Centurion, all you got to do is... If, and if you have a green Amex, it's 50 bucks. But they're actually raising the prices and they're actually changing the rules next year. So I actually just got rid of my Amex. I got a long layover. And then we have a long layover coming back in Mexico City. I don't know what we're going to do. But that's good. That was a great tip. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Have a great week. Yeah. You too. Take Two care. Two weeks. Have fun on Halloween. Leo Laporte, the tech guy with the boy genius, Micah Sargent. 
keeping me company as he does on Saturdays now. Thank you for being here, Mike. I appreciate it. Oh, happy to join you, Leo. Would you like some cheese? Oh, do you have some A Sargento? Pocket? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> if you got Baby Bell in your... Uh... I got Baby Bell in my pocket. <laughs> uh, 88, 80, we have... I don't know why. It's a company thing, but we apparently have a refrigerator full of it baby is bells. A drawer filled with <laughs> like you could jump into it like Scrooge McDuck. Is that who it is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but instead of money, it's cheese. <laughs> eighty-eight eighty-eight ask Leo is the phone number. Uh, back to the phones we go with Ben, Pacific Palisades, California. Hello, Ben. Hi, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Welcome. Yes, um, I've had Apple desktop computers for 20 years, but I'm not a techie guy. <laughs> and when I tell you that I'm buying my first new Apple in 14 years... Holy cow! Yeah, yeah, but it's worked beautiful. It's been phenomenal. But I can't even access my banking on it anymore. I guess for security reasons, all the browsers that are capable on my computer are, are worthless. Wait a minute, you have a, you're trying to get on the line with a 14-year-old computer. Yeah, and I've had no I get it. Till the, till yeah. last Monday. Um, yeah, it's it's a security thing because right. you can't use a modern browser, unfortunately. On a, a, yeah, exactly. So yeah. here's my question. I went into the Apple store, and I need some advice. Do I wait to get the M1 desktop, or should I get the Intel? And now the other issue is I have a lot of old Apple Works files in CWA format. I know that the application won't work, but I want to be able to at least read them when I get the new computer, what do you recommend? Should I get the M1 or do the Intel desktop? I would not get an Intel desktop. They are now, uh, I think, very clearly uh, uh, obs way. obsolete. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They were great six months ago, but they're really not the future for Apple. Uh, okay. The good news is there is one desktop based on the M1 chip, and that's the iMac, the beautiful, colorful 24-inch iMacs. Yes. And I, if I, you know, given that you're you've been happy for 14 years, this would be a massive jump forward. Sure. Uh, and I don't think you, you know, it would be worth waiting because we don't know how long it's going to be. It it could be March. It could be June. It could be as late as June. So you could be talking nine months. That's a long time. And it well, sounds no, like you no, need one now. You're telling me in two months the M1 24 inch will be available, not the new M plus. But the M1 is already there, available supposedly. It's available now. You know, yeah, but they can't deliver for two two, two months. months back yeah. order. <gasps> what I'm told. Holy cow! Yeah, this it's this whole chip shortage, the supply chain shortage. That's a shame. Okay. Um, I did not realize they were that. Yeah. So that's the fastest you can get it. Okay. So you've answered the first question. Now, what do I do about Apple Works? documents that are I think, CWK. Yeah, the CWK files are uh, Claris Works. Okay. Uh, and you can open them with Apple's current version of that, which is called iWork, and it comes free with all Macintoshes. So uh, is it a spreadsheet? Is it word, word processing? It's just uh, an invoice I created years ago for a business I have, and okay. I've got all those invoices in, I guess, Claris Works. It says Apple Works 6. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's gone through a few... Oh, it's not Apple Works though. Uh, it's Claris Works CWK. And the okay. good news is, uh, the current versions of Apple's iWork apps will open it. So if it's a word processing document, pages, if it's a spreadsheet, numbers, no problem. Oh, beautiful! So even on the new M1, yes, I will be able to just have when I go to the store to buy the computer, they can uh, transfer the data, and yes. then I can open it in iWorks. Yes, fantastic! And uh, it'll open a whole lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> I you'll, can imagine I'm going to be. You'll go and get a cup of coffee, and you say, "Wait a minute, wait, I can't get up." <laughs> uh, yeah, gosh, this is interesting. Two two months. So if you really needed it, you could certainly get an iMac, Intel iMac today. There's no, 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 I'll wait now. You're telling me, forget it. It's it's outmoded. I really, I, I feel that way. People are going to yell at me because uh, it isn't quite the case. They've already said we're going to support Intel for at least two more years. Not 14. So my, my, my concern is that you're going to be in the same pickle that you're in right now in a, only in a couple of years. Okay. The other question that's come up, I love, you know, I burn all my old audiophile CD collection. I've got about 39 gigs on this. That'll all be transferable, I'm guessing. Absolutely. You could do it yourself, in fact, yeah. without bringing it to the Apple Store. You just get an external drive, copy everything over. Right. Yeah. Well, they're telling me that with the M1, unlike the Intel, I will no longer ever be able to burn. There is no outboard 
<laughs> you can, they don't make it, but you can buy it. Uh, that's an interesting question. Oh. Uh, you can certainly buy USB uh, DVD writers or CD writers. The issue will be the software. And I'm pretty sure that they will, that there is software that'll work on an M1. Eventually. I, okay. I, well, even, or even now. Okay. So because of Rosetta. By the way, uh, they're telling me B&H has uh, IMAX on uh, order for two to four week delays. Okay. So there, so if you shop around, some other vendors may have it sooner. Actually, here's one that's in stock. If you don't mind getting green, Micah would get it. Uh, mm. The silver is two weeks uh, delayed, but the, the green is available. Now, apparently nobody wants the green. Okay, one more question about security. I had a tech tell me, he says, you can keep your old computer, put it in another room, just do not hook it up to your internet. He said, if you do that, the compromised <laughs> yeah. security will be, it can encroach even into the new computer. Somebody else said that's not true. If the old computer is on your network, yep. and you're using the new computer on the same network, will your old computer be vulnerable? No, they said even the new one would be. No, they that's not true. It would open true. up the whole thing. No, that's not true. Okay, good. You probably will not want to go online with the old computer, but it can be on your network. Well, then won't I be online? I mean, if I go online... No, because the... To, so you're sitting there passively with this old computer looking at stuff. You're not using the browsers. You're not doing anything. You're just using it as in the old days. Remember, we used to use them like calculators. So we're yeah. just, you know, like a, like, an, like an animal. You're using uh, Claris Works just, you know, to look at your invoice, but you're not going out online. That computer sitting passively on your network is theory in theory vulnerable, but in order to attack it, an attacker would have to get through your router... And then see your computer and get into it. And that is a very, very slim chance. That's not going to happen. Yeah, and in the meantime, I can use the old computer to burn the CDs. Uh, yes. something available. There so. you go. All right. Thank you, Leo. I, my decision's made. I'll wait for the M1. In is the, the old one an iMac, just out of curiosity? Yeah, it's an iMac. It's a Snow Leopard. It's the one one other possibility there. is that you might want to look at a Mac Mini. They may be more available, the uh, first M1 Mac Minis. Those are quite good, too. No, I like the desktop. All right. Stay with that. Okay. But uh, I tell you, this thing has been flawless for 14 years. Oh, yeah. I've never updated it because the guy who set me up said your old Apple works could get you could lose it. You won't be able to use it on the computer. So I never even updated it. And it's worked flawlessly. <laughs> Maybe it is Apple works. That might actually predates Claris works. OK, but it is the same file format, that CWK file format. Beautiful. Uh, Scooter X is telling me Roxio's Toast, which is a CD burning program for Apple's, is now M1 compatible. So you will even be able to burn. Fantastic. All right. Thanks so much, guys. You're welcome. My pleasure. And of course, the iMac, or Mac Mini, I should say, is a desktop, but you'd need a monitor uh, to use it, keyboard and mouse. Um, I actually like the form factor of the Mac Mini because it's not tied to the monitor. So if down the road you have a Mac Mini and you say, I want to get a nice monitor, bigger monitor, different monitor, multiple monitors, you could do that. So um, uh, I don't know. And as far as security... Somebody in the chat room, user 9630, is saying a good point. There could be a zero-day flaw. <clears throat> it would have to be a flaw in the router. Mm -hmm. uh, your router would have to let this malicious traffic through. <clears throat> so the zero-day would not be a, a, a Mac zero-day because you're, you know, you're already that 2014 computer, or, or sorry, the 14-year-old computer is already wide open to all sorts of exploits it would have to be something that gets through the router so the router is vulnerable keep your router up to date keep, you know don't have a 14 year old router on your network that would definitely be a bad idea and i want to bounce back real quick to that leave uh, to that oh. in a sec because yeah. i need to take a break uh, use word format okay. yeah that's what so uh i was reading that the newer versions of Apple's iWork suite might not open CWK files. Really? But you can download LibreOffice, which will. Which will. Yeah. So if It says colors. they might not or will not. Uh, from what the internet is saying, they don't anymore. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Oh, I gave him bad advice. Well, if you're still listening... Um that's, wow, that's a bummer. Yeah, definitely. But if you open it with LibreOffice, you can convert it into a modern format. Right. And uh, Scooter X and I found a, a Python script that I just read through, and there's nothing I'm malicious sure there's in it. I'm sure lots of ways to. That will let you, it, you have to download LibreOffice first, and then it will convert those to PDFs. Nice. 
Oh, to PDF. That's the only thing is that they convert to PDFs. I not... guess you can cut and paste. Oh, that's a bummer. Yes. That's quite the bummer. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte, the tech guy on the air, along with the boy wonder, Mr. Micah Sargent, answering your questions, talking high tech, 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, 888-827-5536, toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you could still reach me, but you've got to use Skype or something like that. 8888-ASK. Leo, website, techguylabs.com. Put links there uh, for everything we talk about. Do have to do an update. Micah uh, did a little research. I had told our uh, last caller last hour that he should be able to open up those old Apple Works or Claris Works files in uh, iWork, and I guess that's not the case anymore. Yeah, it appears that Apple hasn't updated it to have support for those files, but you can download the free... It used to be able to open yes, them, right? Yes, yes, before like 2016, I think, or 2018. Oh, man. Uh, so now... I guess they figured... It's a 20-year-old file format. We don't have to keep supporting it. So what do you do? Now you would need to download LibreOffice, which we had a caller not too long ago talking about LibreOffice. But by downloading that, you'll be able to access those files. And I think the most important thing you can do is save them as a more modern file format after you uh, download that application. Yeah. And LibreOffice is free. It's an open source office suite that's very good. Uh, you might actually keep using it after you try it. But if not, you could save it as a Word document or an Excel document or a variety of other documents. So, uh, yeah, that's too bad. It used to be you could. I was wrong. Thank you for uh, checking that. Um, yeah. Uh, 8888 Leo. Jeff on the line from Diamond Bar, our next caller. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Thanks for taking the call, Leo. Welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Uh, my question has to do with a TV sound system. I have a sound bar system for, on my TV that's died. Um, and I've already, you know, came to grips with the fact that I just need to replace it. But uh, it's the sound bar itself that has died. It has no function anymore. But the system itself came with uh, two supplemental or Bluetooth connected uh, speakers, uh, a subwoofer and, and then the... Uh, the set of surround sounds, yeah, 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 surround. And they have no hard wire connection on them. They only there's no there's no jack on the them. back. It's just a sealed box, right? Oh, so I, I've tried to see if there's any way, you know, with my computer and phone to see if when I turn them on and put them into reset link mode, do they identify? But it looks like not. But before I threw them in the trash, you know, they they work perfectly well. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't some How way frustrating. of frustrating. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they they say they're Bluetooth, but somehow uh, only this sound bar can talk to them. So it may not be Bluetooth. Did, are you assuming it's Bluetooth, or do you know? Well, it, it says Bluetooth. It has uh, in the manual and both on the little okay. screen when the sound bar does work. It says a BT comes up, but... It's a terrible, you know, it may be terrible the, choice, yeah. frankly, because uh, Bluetooth isn't really ideal for audio. It's compressed. There's latency issues. So honestly, a lot of uh, wireless uh, speaker systems use their own RF proprietary radio uh, systems instead of Bluetooth. But I guess the soundbar used it. Um, yeah, if there's no, so there's no external openings of any kind on these boxes. No, not at all. Just the the power. That's it. And the replacement. You know, I, I checked and see, can I just buy a new soundbar yeah. and add that? And no, they don't sell that same. They don't make it anymore. anymore. Yeah. And uh, so, and they don't sell them individually. What's they the What's the brand name? Them. Just in case the chat. Samsung. Cha Samsung. So maybe the chat room knows something. <clears throat> you know, I would look at see if it's easy to open the case on this subwoofer and these surrounds. There will be a way to connect to them internally. Yeah, uh, you'd have to take it apart. So maybe before you uh, you threw it out, you might. I mean, you, you, nothing lose to lose if you open it up and you can't do anything. But there's going to be yeah. a, you know a speaker in there, and there's going to be a little amplifier. There's probably going to be a way to uh, get an analog signal into it. That's what you want is an analog port. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, okay. I, I don't know of any other way, and maybe the chat room does. Can you give us the model number? It's Samsung. Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, let me look here, because what I replaced it with is not the one I've uh, previously had, and I just got it just in the light here. 
This is what uh, smartphones are good for. You turn on the uh, flashlight and you get real close and you take a picture. Because I can't read these numbers anyway. <laughs> so I zoom in on the Samsung, picture. Yeah, Samsung model HW, like Howard Water, dash R470. R470. Well, if anybody's listening and knows a way to get to these uh, Bluetooth, quote, I'm going to put that in quotes, Bluetooth subwoofer and surrounds, be ashamed to, I agree, shame to throw them out. They're perfectly good. Yeah. Uh, but, it, uh, okay. some, you know, sometimes the world moves on and the manufacturer doesn't. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I wasn't more help, but we'll look into it. Keep listening for the next half hour. Maybe somebody will come up with something. Mark in San Bernardino is next. Hey, Mark, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello, Mark. For... How are you? Good to see you. Welcome. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, the subject matter for me is uh, in the videography department. All right, I'm prepared. I've heard of that. I know that word. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'd like to set up a webcam live stream recording uh, hardware system and maybe software system for live events. And I've been scouring a market for you know a suitable system that is affordable. And I came across this one system. Uh, it's through Logitech and a sub-brand Mevo. Yeah, I like the Mevo. I actually have a Mevo. Okay. It was originally a standalone company. Logitech bought it. And uh, the originally, the one I have was designed to stream to Facebook only. But uh, uh, it's a really neat idea. I'm a fan of the Mevo. It, it's an interesting choice. What are you going to be streaming? Preferably right now, the live you, events. Live events. Live events. Uh, uh, not music. Okay, Concert that's venue. So, yeah. so sound is important. Correct. Yeah, the Mevos, uh, at least the one I have, and I'm going to look at the new ones. Uh, uh, sound was an issue because you you had to use the built-in mic. I'm going to guess by now, Mevo must have some external connector for a sound system or maybe you could record it separately are you going to stream it live yes yeah, that was the second part i mean and you know on a platform twitch uh yeah YouTube, twitch youtube youtube's good. great because a lot of people have it have a lot of access to it yeah. so this is interesting so what mevo does now is they have three cameras they're weird they're not regular video cameras they just look like little decks of cards uh they have batteries they can go up to six hours uh, you can also give them power if you want. The problem is they have an internal microphone. Now, they say, well, we've got three MEMS mics with spatial processing and high-quality AAC. That's not going to be ideal. Although, on the other hand, it's going to be easy to set up because these are small. They're unobtrusive. You put them close enough to the band. You know, you might actually get pretty decent audio. Uh, the, the nice thing is it's very simple to stream with these because... They go right to your computer, and then you you hook it up to Facebook Live or Twitch or uh, YouTube or whatever you're going to stream to. So it would certainly be a simple yeah. solution. Not you know it's far from a pro solution, but it but for the no. price and the simplicity of it, it's only 1080p. So you know, but it's a thousand bucks for three cameras. I mean, it's it's not cheap. Do you want to do a three camera shoot? Is that well, yes, I wanted to play, uh, you know, producer director and yeah. have a nice setup, and uh, you know, compared to you know, commercial systems with other cameras oh, and much cheaper and everything. Yeah. Uh, I I came across the the Mevo just you know the other day, and it was the first that I've been able to find that had like you know, the wireless system that you know yeah. went into the simple little it's, notebook it's phone. Its chief advantage is it's simple. Uh, and you're right. Correct. At that, even though a thousand bucks sounds like a, a lot, I mean, a three camera shoot, everything you need for a thousand bucks is pretty impressive. People sometimes use their smartphones, and there are ways to do that. With what's the software you use, Micah? To to eCam? Yeah, eCam. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. could do that, and you could hook up, you know, use your smartphone, borrow a friend's, and but it's gonna it's gonna be more, much more complicated. Uh, and you may not want to leave your smartphone on a tripod somewhere out in the audience. So, yeah, I think the Mevo is actually a pretty good choice. I don't know of anything anywhere near 
this simple. Right. In that price range, you yeah. have to spend a lot more money uh, than that even to get the next simplest thing. Because I've looked at a few of these systems and they are very pricey. Yeah. I mean, you could get three camcorders. You could wire them into something like the Blackmagic ATEM Mini, which is about 500 bucks. So say three camcorders, 600, 1100 bucks now. Hook that up. Uh, to your computer, you'd still probably want to get a, a separate audio system. This would have the advantage of you could use a mixer and have microphones, have the singer could have a microphone, the drums could have a microphone, you could m mic the, the guitar and the bass. So you'd have better sound, you know, real sound. But now you're going to have to get a mixer. You can mix that down and put that into the ATEM. So it's a more expensive, probably a more pro solution. So that would be your other way of doing it. Three camcorders, each with HDMI out. The Blackmagic ATEM, ATEM Mini. They make an ATEM Mini Extreme and an ATEM Mini Pro. The Pro has streaming software built into it, so you don't even need a computer. You can mix it on the ATEM, stream it out. Uh, all you need is an internet connection for that ATEM. That might be the other way to go. It's certainly going to be more flexible, more pro, Especially if you already have cameras that you yeah can maybe use. you have one or two cameras you know I mean camcorders are cheap now so that's the the good news you, these the Mevo comes with tripods so you'd have to buy tripods it's going to end up being more expensive but a little more flexible so that's the alternate uh, way to do it Black Magic's a pretty impressive company they make uh, these little mixers they're so good the ATEM Mini or get the Mini Pro with streaming built into it uh, three camcorders doesn't matter. We use for our uh, streams uh, here at uh, our podcast network. We just use cheap Canon Vixias. They're about two hundred. What are they, John? Now two hundred, three hundred. They were fifteen hundred bucks when we started some years ago. They're still seven fifty. Yeah, you can you can get uh, you can get cheaper camcorders are cheap now. So be more than a thousand. A little more flexible. You'd get better audio. But yeah, I've used the Mevos. I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It, it was a great way to stream, you know. It's sitting on my... Uh, actually, I think Lisa, my wife, got it for me as a gift Oh, to stream. I said, well, I don't... You I don't, want multiple angles for I, uh, I have farming? This whole, I have this whole studio uh, <laughs> in, in Petaluma. Perhaps you've heard of it. Uh, I don't really need it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I did play with it uh, for a while. Have fun, Mark. I mean, it's a great project. Um, the Mini is a great... So good. You know, that would be the only other thing I would probably look at. 8888-ASK-LEO. More calls coming up. Dick T. Bartulo. Toe. Dick T. Bartulo. Toe. Big T. Lar <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Dick Labaregal do. So, Scooter X. I know you're all excited because you think you're going to talk me into buying a new camera. But. You're moving from Sony, aren't you? No, I'm staying on Sony. Oh. And I have a better Sony than the one they unveiled. They unveiled the a7 IV. I have the a7R4 already. The R stands for really, really good. good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, isn't that Reddit uh, link interesting, Sophia? Yeah. If uh, the fo the person earlier asking about the soundbar is still listening, um, I found the manual for the Samsung HWR470 oh online. Yes. And uh, it's understandable that you didn't see this on the back because that port is hidden. There is a digital audio out on that out. device. Or digital audio in. in, sorry. Yeah, digital audio in on that device. So you can do an optio, optical audio cable from your you know system to that soundbar. That's why I ask that. for the model number. That kind of brilliance. That is awesome. It's on the, it says it's on the bottom of the soundbar, which is odd. No, but he doesn't have the soundbar anymore. Oh, he only has the subwoofer. Oh, the soundbar died. Okay, completely. And he died. has the satellite stuff, which is a subwoofer and two surrounds, which were wirelessly connected to the soundbar. But the soundbar is dead. It's okay, gone. I missed that first. Part. So what you're looking for is a connector on those surrounds and the sub. I think it's really goofy to have blue. Isn't that terrible? I just hate that. Ooh, I know. I got to update my Samsung. Now I see. Now I really don't know what to do. I didn't get the new iPhone, thank God, and I canceled the Duo, thank God, because otherwise, it. But the Pixel Six. Oh. And the Flip Three. I got too many phones, and and the Apple Watch and the Samsung Watch, and I love this. You know what? 
if I didn't have the iPhone and the Apple Watch, I would absolutely use the Flip. I love the Flip. Would you like to borrow my Flip 3? No. Oh, don't make a face. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. You made a face. It's, I'm really looking forward to the Google Pixel phone that's coming. Um, yeah, the Pixel phone will be better. Anyway, I'm going to update the Samsung uh, watch. I saw that, yeah. Do you wear both at the same time, or do you just yeah, no. look at it? That would be really dorky. Look at it on its charger. I just look at it charging. <laughs> <sighs> it's depressing. I buy it because I feel like, well, I really need to try it and know about it. And I did. Yeah. But ultimately, given the choice between the Apple ecosystem, and if I, you know, if I, and I, I wasn't going to buy the new laptop either because I like my Linux framework. And I was thinking, maybe I'll just go Linux and Android and dump the proprietary stuff. I think but then you, Apple came out with the M1. Yeah, you're going to be Max. so enamored of that one. I am getting my M1 Pro on Tuesday, just in time. That's exciting. If, if, the, if the ship doesn't slip. Sometimes the ship slips. I was reading that some of them have gotten sooner. Slipping up. Slipping up. Hey, I want to thank uh, our sponsor for the podcast this week, User Way. I want to thank them, not just because they're sponsoring the show, but because they're doing God's work. I just think it's so important what User Way is doing. They're making websites accessible, ADA compliant. Uh, they and, and they're doing it in a way that makes any makes it easy for any business to make sure that 60 million disabled users can use their site. So it's good for business. It's good for you if you if you have a website. It also can keep you from an ADA lawsuit. So it might it's the law, the American for Disabilities Act. Userway, it's an incredible AI powered solution that enforces all the WCAG guidelines. WCAG is the uh, World Wide Web Accessibility Guidelines. And it really is important that you do this. As I said, it's the law, so you have to. In fact, there's a famous pizza company that's website was not ADA compliant. They got sued, and their defense was, hey, uh, we got a phone number. What are you talking about? If somebody's blind, they just call the phone number. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled no. That's what they called separate but equal. That's illegal. You're a public entity. Your website has to be accessible. It's not enough to have a phone number. It has to be accessible. So this is the Supreme Court precedent. This is why you got to do this. And it's just the right thing to do. How does UserWay do it? Very simply, JavaScript. It's kind of magical. Add one line of JavaScript to your website. It pulls in the code. It examines everything before it goes out. What it's actually doing is interesting. Every website has the kind of the front page of the website that any sighted user with a normal browser is going to see. That's, that's what you see and I see. But every website, every browser does this, has an accessibility layer, a hidden layer that is readable by screen readers and other devices to make that website accessible to other users, users with disabilities. That accessibility layer is so important. And, and you know, I've known about this for some time. Uh, you know, things like the alt tag. You know, whenever you have an image on a website, a blind user can't see the image. So the right thing to do is to add a little tag. It's in the HTML. It says, this is a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. Problem is, most websites, big sites, have hundreds of images. There's a lot of work. And that's just the beginning. UserWay automatically uses AI, does the recognition of the image, says Golden Gate Bridge, it actually makes a list of all the corrections, and you can modify it. So if you want to say the Golden Gate Bridge is sunset, you can add that, which is really nice. But it gets you that starting point to make sure you're ADA compliant. It user way is, is used by the biggest sites in the business. Over a million websites. Coca-Cola uses it. Disney uses it. eBay, FedEx. These are enterprise-grade tools that are now available to everybody through the user way. JavaScript interface. It's very, very easy. You put in that line of code, suddenly your site's compliant. It remediates complex nav menus. That's, by the way, the number one pain point I hear from people all the time. My screen reader doesn't understand this menu. In fact, I think a lot of users, the hamburger menus and the three dots, I think everybody's puzzled by nav these days. It fixes it, creates that accessibility layer. Uh, it helps with things like vague link violations, uh, broken links. 
makes here's a really interesting one. You have we do Twit does every company does have you know the Pantone colors for your logo and stuff. They don't they don't mess with that, but in the accessibility layer, they modify the the luminance and the it, let's see. There's saturate hue saturation and luminance hue stays the same that's the same color but they modify the saturation and luminance to make it more accessible to people with low vision it's things like that that are so cool by the way platform agnostic if you use wordpress it works shopify wix easy to add user way uh, aem sitecore sharepoint easy to add user way it integrates seamlessly with everything so let UserWay help your business meet its compliance goals and I think maybe even more importantly, improve the experience for all your users. It's not just me. Just ask the voice of Siri. Hi, I'm Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. You won't hear me say something like this too often. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're looking for. But every day, that's what the Internet is like for millions of people with disabilities. UserWay fixes all of that with just one line of code. One line, that's it. It's the miracle of JavaScript. Uh, I just think this is such a good solution. I want you to check it out. I have to say, as a guy who runs his own websites, this was always a pain point for me. I know it has to be ADA compliant. It's hard to do. UserWay just makes it so simple. Make any website fully accessible and ADA compliant. With UserWay, everyone who visits your site can browse seamlessly, customize it to fit their needs. It's a perfect way to showcase your brand's commitment to the millions of people with disabilities. Go to UserWay, U-S-E-R-W-A-Y dot org slash twit. Actually, right now, you're gonna, it's, all, it's very affordable. It's, I mean, that was my other fears. Oh, how much is this going to cost? It's very affordable, uh, but right now it's even more affordable, 30% off uh, if you go to userway.org slash twit. 30% off UserWay's AI-powered accessibility solution. UserWay, making the internet accessible for everyone. And by the way, uh, UserWay has a great free scanning tool that you can use to check. I would at least do that. Um, it, I know it's overwhelming, to make your site accessible, but UserWay can really make it easy. UserWay, and for 30% less, userway.org slash twit. Visit them today. And we thank UserWay so much for supporting the Tech Guy podcast. Now, back to the show. Oh, yeah, I got to do a show. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Can't sit here just rocking out. 8888, ask Leo. All right, now I've got to warn you, Micah, you're probably not familiar with this guy. His name is Chris from Miami. And the question always is, how many cups of coffee have you had today, Chris? Well, I'm going to be... <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm in about five cups easy. Okay. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. Well, That's you okay. You know, I heard him say... I heard Mike... Well, I'm a fan of him anyways because he does the iOS and... He and loves you, Mike. Oh, I do know Chris. that about you. Hi, yes. Chris. Yeah. How you doing? Doing well. I've only had one cup of coffee. Sorry. Yeah, oh, well, we have to fix that. Chris, I should so. mention, Chris pushed other stuff in his coffee. Oh. Right, Chris? Yeah. You got, like, mushrooms in there. Oh, mushroom okay. coffee. Like Ashtanga well, and uh, Gowara, Wakanda, right whatever. Leo Laporte says we've got shrooms in there. Not that kind of shrooms. What do you got, what do you got in your coffee besides <laughs> coffee? Well, we got the we have the spirilla, we have the Ganoderma, we have like four different very powerful see, ingredients. See, see, I told you. What do they do? Are they more energy? What's the idea there? He does well, not need more energy. Chris does not does. need it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make Chris giggle. Okay, Chris, what can I do for you today? I always have a good time on this call. Well, when I can get through, I was just mentioning to Miss Kim a few minutes ago, you know, when you call in, because I've called in twice recently, so this is like my breaking point right here. After this, i got to take Yeah, we have to, because people else. listen, they go, why is, it that, why is it Chris always gets in and I can never get in? So we have to kind of limit you, that's all. That's okay. That's okay. This is my second time, so this is my limited call for a couple yeah. of months. Yeah. So I'm good okay. for that. Okay. Um, and, uh, but I said, you know, when you get on the call with Kim and literally it just rings and rings and rings. And then when she picks up, it's like, it's like you won the lottery. Oh. It is. It's so, it's, it's, it's so exciting. exciting. Yeah. 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 
And um, and so I'm in and she says, well, what's your question for Leo? And I said, well, I says, I know you use ExpressVPN. I use the one with my carrier right now with AT&T. <laughs> okay, so the whole reason not to use, nothing wrong with AT&T, but the whole reason not to use the VPN your internet service provider provides you with mm -hmm. is because you might perhaps want some privacy from your internet service provider. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it depends why you're using the VPN. For security, I think it's going to be fine. Do they do they say what the brand is uh, that, that they provide? It's just it's just they didn't, they really couldn't answer any questions. It's sort of like <laughs> one we offer. Okay, you problem know, number I, two. I can't go on that. I got to give a friend of mine a call up and pedal on me. He's been in so I'm going to refer you to a, to a study that just came out of the FTC this week. Yeah. On Thursday. Uh. I'll, I'll quote to you from the study. While several ISPs in our study, and they wouldn't name names, I'm a little disappointed, tell consumers they will not sell their data, they fail to reveal to consumers the myriad of ways that their data can be used, transferred, or monetized outside of selling it, also often burying such disclosures in the, disclosures in the fine print of their privacy policies. The report was provided to the FTC or ordered by the FTC a couple of years ago. AT&T, Celco, that's Verizon, Charter, Xfinity, T-Mobile, and Google Fiber, 98% of the mobile internet market. And essentially, the study points, this is a quote, to the need for urgent action to protect users from these services. <laughs> they are really sharing real-time location data with third parties. They're allowing third parties to garner sensitive details about an individual's life, such as if they visit a rehab or where their children to go to daycare. Uh, this is, I was fairly shocked by this report. Uh, the FTC does not really regulate ISPs. But bottom line, if you're choosing a, a, a VPN, it's hard to choose. A lot of the VPN companies are shady themselves. I wouldn't get one from an ISP, though, because obviously it's not going to protect you against your ISP. So you probably should look at third-party ones. Look at one that does not log, that has its privacy policy independently audited, things like that. Um, but I think maybe not from your carrier. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. This, this article was just like, oh, my God. Uh, the, 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 uh, we, we've always kind of said, Chris, that these companies collect data, but who, you know. What about ExpressVPN? That's a sponsor that. Yeah, and that's, you know, they're a sponsor. So, uh, you know, I, but I do know because, you know, we vet our sponsors. I do know that they, they have PricewaterhouseCooper auditing both their privacy policy and the server technology they use to make sure that it does not log and all of that stuff. So I know they're good. But there's others. Mulvad is good. Um, you, but you really, when you, before you choose a VPN, you really should do some uh, digging to see if there's any negatives on that. The other thing you can do is go to Privacy Tools. Um, let me get you that. They just moved their... Um, they moved to another website. It was privacytools.io, and I no longer recommend them because uh, okay. there was a little tiff between them and... Let me just go to privacy. But there's a website that recommends uh, privacy stuff. Okay. Um, and let me find you... <laughs> privacyguides.org. Okay. Privacyguides.org. I would, uh, they're, <laughs> they're uh, a certain breed of privacy advocate, you know, the tin, tinfoil hat type. Mm -hmm. So they're very uh, adamant. Just because something is not recommended by them does not mean they're bad. But I would say if they do recommend it, then you know that they, <laughs> that this must be really good because they're very tough. They're very okay. tough. I'll, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. Yeah. yeah. Privacyguides.org. I don't, okay. you know, I'm not saying AT&T's VPN isn't good, but it's a little weird that they're offering one because one of the reasons people use VPNs is to pr protect their privacy. Well, it comes with 
call protect. So, you know, call protect and mobile security, they have, it comes with that 399. Oh, well, that's fine. That's okay to use that. I, I and, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would use it for those reasons. And then maybe right. if you, you know, the other thing that's, it is the case, uh, Brian X. Chen just wrote a long article uh, in the New York Times why he says, you know, you don't really need a VPN anymore. A lot of, it depends why you use it. So a lot of the reasons for privacy protection, I think so. If you're worried about security, maybe less so because so many sites now are secure. Almost everywhere you go is secure and encrypted that maybe a VPN isn't that important. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link. Let me put links to all of this in the show notes. I'm just going to paste. Show notes. Yeah, I'll paste privacyguides.org into the chat room and I'll get Brian X. Chen's article. I'm not sure I completely agree with him. But he, he makes some important points that's probably worth looking at uh, before you buy well, it. I weigh heavily on you, and you know that very much over the years. I know. I, I you're very kind. There's a lot going on out there. Well, yeah. I, am, I, am, I am a big fan. But, I mean, aside from that, I like you just the way you are and all that fun stuff. But, really, I just I trust you, really, is the bottom line. Yeah. That's what I tell a lot so, of my friends is that they're like, can you trust this guy? And I'm like, a, a million percent you could trust. Well, of course you can. I mean, I, I don't even think about it. It just, just really know. depends on your threat. When security got, people always say this. It depends on your yeah. threat model. It depends what you want to protect against. So, Everything. yeah, right. Well, internet, internet service provider snooping, probably don't get it from your ISP. Um, there's also, you know, in third security, obviously. And then the third reason people use it is for regional, you know, so they can watch BBC or whatever. Um and so for all three of those, I think ExpressVPN is very good, but they're not the only choice by any means. So there are other choices okay. out there. Hey, Chris, a pleasure. Yes, thank you, sir. Enjoy thank your you. Ashtanga root. <laughs> Enjoy the shrooms. <laughs> See ya. I love him. He's such a character. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Don Cornelius here with the Soul Train. We're riding the party train. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So VPNs, it's an interesting topic. Uh, I referred Chris offline to a website, a very good website for people who want to really protect their privacy. It's called Privacy Guides at privacyguides.org. But I also said, and they, by the way, have a list of VPN services they recommend, but they also talk about the what VPNs don't do, you know. Uh, but the other thing I would say about these guys at Privacy Guides is they're the, you know, the, you've met them, the, the privacy guys that wear tinfoil hats that are really, I think sometimes you can be overzealous about your privacy. Uh, but if you are zealous about your privacy, certainly everything they recommend is, you know, if, if they recommend it, it is, you know, the best you can get in terms of privacy, maybe more than you need for some people. That's all. Uh, so privacyguides.org. And then I also uh, mentioned an article by Brian X. Chen. He's the tech guy at the New York Times. That was a little bit of a surprise. He wrote, it's time to stop paying for a VPN. Now, a, a number of the points he raised are absolutely true. For instance, he said, many virtual private network services that were meant to protect your web browsing can no longer be trusted. And that's always been the case. There have been plenty. It's a it's a bit of a shady business. There are plenty of bad operators. So you do have to pick, as I mentioned to Chris, pick very carefully to make sure that, you know, and I think the, the easiest thing for everybody to do is read the privacy policy. You're looking for a VPN that does not log what you're doing. That's really the most important thing a VPN can do. You also should understand the limits of what a VPN can do, obviously. Privacy guides will help with that. Um, he makes a good point, and it depends on what you're using a VPN for. Nowadays, when you log in to most websites, it's already secure. That's what that S means when you see HTTPS, then the padlock that's locked and so forth. Those sites are encrypted from your computer to those sites. Certainly, if that's what you were worried about, is somebody sniffing your traffic as you were at a coffee shop, you don't have to worry about that. But there are other threat models at coffee shops that don't involve that. Uh uh, somebody sitting at the coffee shop can see you. You are on the same network. And so there are some hazards with that that a VPN might protect you from. There are other uses for a VPN as well. So I don't agree with Brian X. Chen. I do think that for people who have certain things they're worried about, a VPN is a good choice. Not everybody needs one, though. So it's important to understand 
what you're trying to do. And the, yeah, the context, the context, where you are. <laughs> I use the phrase that a lot of security experts do, you're a threat model. What is you're trying to protect against? Um, and some people are more, I'm not uh, super privacy uh, concerned. I know that everybody's snooping on me. I carry this phone around, every app on the phone's trying to figure out where I am, what I'm doing. I know Google knows everything about me. If, if I were on Facebook, which I'm not, uh, Facebook would know everything about me. Actually, I'm on Instagram, so they do. Never mind. Never mind. They do know everything about me. Uh, I'm, am I happy about that? No, but do I think it's a threat? Not so much. But that's my opinion. I know a lot of people disagree with that. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Where, where do you sit on the privacy scale, Micah? I am a little bit farther to protect myself than you are, but not so far as, say, a, a, a frequent panelist, Georgia Dow, who's very, you know, protective George of privacy. George is a good friend and a correspondent really of ours. Good, yeah, really. She's, um, she's paranoid. Stringent. Yeah, focus yeah. on that. I... I know that there are some, and it's it's trading off uh, some convenience that I'm okay with. But I do use I use ExpressVPN, yes, yeah, some uh, sponsor, but I use them before that even because of the the way that they have their their yeah, system good. set up. Yeah. So anyway, I try to be as uh, protective as possible while still maintaining that it's okay to have some of that data in the places that it is because of the convenience that I get out of it, the features that I get out of it. So I don't go as far as to Faraday cage my house or anything like that. And I mean, I have an IOT show, so very clearly my threat model is not super secure. Um, yeah. If you have any devices in your house, like an Amazon Echo or a camera, you, you know, you're broadcasting, dude. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. you can't be, you can't do those things and and want to and and say, oh, and 100 percent private. I think there's some question even about how much privacy companies like Google and Apple offer you on their mobile devices. Apple is selling ads uh, on their app store uh, to ad, to app companies, and uh, I, you know, I think the important point when Google says, oh, we're not going to allow you know tracking cookies anymore and apple says we're going to turn off or allow you to turn off this id for advertising uh so that these apps can't track you the thing to remember is what they're doing is turning off the ability of third parties to track you mm -hmm. which enhances the value of their own first party tracking so that's my point when i say that apple google and facebook they know everything about you maybe they don't want other companies to know the same Right. And even outside of the advertising, most of these systems are still tracking you for uh, usage patterns and the way that you use these different systems to be able to, you know, they say, you know, better their software. Yeah. So even outside of advertising, Be better their behaviors. services, which right. isn't necessarily for your benefit. It could right. be to better their services for their benefit. So, yeah, uh, first, that's the thing people probably should be more worried about these days is first party tracking uh, companies that you do business with do know everything about you. And and they have to. That's part of the deal. Facebook, you know, you're going to post a lot of information on Facebook. You're giving them that information. And they're going to hold it close to their vest because that's that's how they sell advertising. That's very valuable to them. Uh, same thing, in my opinion, with Google and Apple. They keep that first-party information. Joe is on the line from Reseda, California, our next caller. Hi, Joe. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. Uh, my brother turned me on to you. And, Hi, bro. Uh, What's his name? My brother's name is Jacob. Okay, as long as it's not Micah Sargent. Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, Jacob. He listens to you religiously. Nice. And uh, I just happened to land on you. And I've I, I've wondered, and I've listened before many times. I appreciate Thank you. your insight. Good. And Thank you. you're a lot smarter computer-wise than I am. But uh, Well, we'll see I, about that. <laughs> I, I had a simple question. What do you recommend in relation to virus protection? I have a oh. Mac and I have a Dell PC. So Windows, your... you don't need anything because Windows comes with Microsoft Defender, which is a very good antivirus. Both Microsoft and Apple do a lot to protect you these days. Uh, Microsoft is always updating. The reason I don't generally recommend third-party antiviruses for end users is, well, there are a number of them. First of all, uh, as you probably know, any security system on your computer slows you down and sometimes gets in your way. So that's problem number one. You're putting something on your system that is going to reach its tentacles deep within your system. That's problem number two. 
is if there are any security flaws in your antivirus or your security software, those security flaws can be more of a problem. So we've seen this happen with both Norton and McAfee, that viruses have found flaws in those antiviruses and used them to attack people. That's not good. There's a third problem, and I think this is the biggest problem, it's psychological. Many people who have an antivirus in their system say, well, I'm golden, I'm safe, I'm going to do whatever I want. And the truth is the most important thing is what you do. Much more important than whether you have security software in your system or not. If you're going out visiting hacker.com or, uh, or downloading russianwallpaper.com, don't. <laughs> Stop it. Because you're doing dangerous things. And, and, and the only place really sometimes where an antivirus is not a bad idea is if you've got a teenager in the house. Because those guys, they'll be downloading stuff from all sorts of places. And so sometimes if, if you're not in full control of your system, it's a good idea. But the best thing to do is to you to be prudent, to know what to do to keep your system safe. Update it regularly. Update all the software that goes online regularly. Make sure you've got all the patches. And don't go to, don't download from sites you don't know. Don't click on links. Those are far more important than any security software you put on there. So I say don't. Hey, Diggity! Hey, Leo. How you doing? I'm great. What's up with you in uh, beautiful Disneyland? Any snow uh, yet? <laughs> no, but it's down to 50. Oh, my God. 50? Yeah, I put the Hawaiian shirt away. <laughs> Time for the flannel. I think I, I think it's pretty safe that it's not coming out this year. No, yeah. Flannel's good though. It's cozy. Oh yeah, no, I love it. I love yeah. it. Well you're going you're going away soon, right? It's like to eighty warmth? degrees in Oaxaca. It's gonna be really nice. Oh my god. Yeah, we're le yeah, we won't be here for Halloween. You get to do it. Yourself. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Here's the man, the myth, the boatless, Dick D. Bartolo, Mad's <laughs> maddest writer, our gizmo wizard. Did you you sold the boat? The guy come and get it. I sold the boat, but I took the the uh, mirrored ball off and put it in the warehouse. Keep the mirror ball. You never can, yeah. you know, have too many mirror <laughs> that's balls. Right. That's for sure. Yeah, well, absolutely. Hey, what do you, you know? Halloween's next weekend. Uh, yes, well, you know what? We are doing our Halloween uh, Gizwiz meetup on Halloween. Because there's no Twitch show. Better to do it on Halloween go. than Thanksgiving. That's all I'm saying. Yes, yeah. yes. No, so we're, we're doing it on Halloween. How so fun. something fun to do. Yeah. And are you, do you, uh, are you uh, wearing a costume? Uh, well, it's a virtual thing, so anybody can be, uh, <laughs> can join in. So you, it's Thanks. real easy to do virtual costumes. Thanks to that Zoom button, you can be anybody you want <laughs> yeah, to be. Yeah, exactly. I'm exactly. a cat. What was it? What was that? A member of the uh, was the attorney <laughs> at the trial said, "Your Honor, I am not a cat, <laughs> but there's some button I can't figure out how to <laughs> yes, turn yes, it off." That was very funny, uh, Mr. Attorney. Uh, you realize you are a cat right now? Oh <laughs> man, the kids have been messing with the Zoom again, Martha. So Dick joins us every week to talk about gizmos, gadgets, stuff. Uh, what yes. is what is your gadget of the week this week? Uh, okay, so this was a great help to me. So, uh, you know, you always mention my book, Good Days and Mad, yes. which goes back to 1994. Yes. And I've had, what, nine computers since then? And along the way, back then, there Wait, was When no, did you write this book? In 1994. <laughs> You've had nine computers? That's about right, yeah. 25 yeah, no, years? Absolutely, absolutely. Every three years you get a new computer, yeah. whether you need one or not. That's correct. But there was no cloud storage back then. And it suddenly dawns on me, I don't have a digital copy of my book. And so every time I want to post a story from the book, I rewrite it from memory. And, and there's one person who always writes, well, in your book, you say <laughs> that it was $70. Oh. And today you put it was $80. <laughs> oh. So I go, you know what? It's on a floppy in the warehouse I go, I actually find the floppy that it's on. Uh, I come back, I, I run to the warehouse. But I wait find a minute, it and do you have a drive? I had a drive. Wait a minute, I had a drive from Imation. Okay? Imation, I remember them, yes, yes. Yes, will work with Windows 98 or the new XP. Ooh, fancy. 
Except you needed to install software, and most computers and you had to have a even have a SCSI have, port yeah. probably back in the day. Exactly. Right? So I went on to Amazon and I found a floppy drive. It says installs its own software and can read wait a old floppies. Wait a minute. You're telling me that your gizmo of the week on this 2021 yeah. edition of the yes. Tech Guy is a floppy disk drive? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Okay. That read. That read my 1994, and it was the, the editor. I had an editor who said, listen, I'm not a comedy writer. I'm great at organizing. Yes. So we, there were a lot of rewrites that moved this chapter into that chapter. So it, it was in word perfect on this floppy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. So, so, so you I actually, put it you, in. You, how much was the floppy drive? $21. Oh, my God. It's USB? Yes. And you were and able to... Re this is the I disc. plug it in and suddenly you see on your new computer, floppy disk drive A. I knew there has been something missing on my computer for years. Drive A. Drive A. Drive yes. A. Yes. Does it go... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And oh. a little green L the little green LED. Uh, 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 okay. Okay, Dick. That's chapter one. Oh, my goodness. And Micah, suddenly, do you even remember I, floppy disks? Yeah, I'm actually getting a little teary-eyed thinking about uh, installing things on my uh, grandparents' computer using a <laughs> floppy disk. <laughs> or uh, several several yeah, floppy disks. Yeah, yeah, Dick, it was his grandparents' computer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Isn't that a riot? Wow. And then I find a program from NCH called uh, Dioxin or... Dioxin? Which, Dioxin that translates word perfect into word. Oh, nice. And I run it through nice. that. And now I have my entire book, at least in digital form. Oh, that's a rescue. So, so you That is a real you, rescue. You were able to get these files. When did, you wrote the book in the nineties, ninety four. Nineteen ninety four. And you were able to get this back and now it's on a hard drive. And it's in the cloud. I put it on... Uh, That's probably the safest place, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah. I put it on uh, OneDrive, and the, the service you suggested, I bought that. Or was it iDrive? I put it on iDrive. You put it on Yahoo? I put it... <laughs> you put no, it on they AOL? Didn't want it. They didn't want it. In your no, AOL Yahoo. file folder. <laughs> yeah. In the cabinet there. Yeah. Wow, that's and, so cool. Uh, so your that gizmo or gadget is a $21 USB device, and it works with if Windows 10. Yes, that's what I'm using it on. Wow. That's what I'm using it on. So if you have old floppies laying around, now the company does say, uh, please plug it directly into a computer, not through not a, a hub. hub. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, although I have a powered hub, and I did use that, but that worked fine. Um, it's made so, by Zhuang Ganzhou. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't have a lot of stuff from them? Oh, Guangzhou Guo makes all the best. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I have a blotter from them. <laughs> <laughs> my buggy whips all came from them. from them in the day. Yeah, yeah. Wow, a floppy disk drive. Dick, you've hit a new high. Yes, exactly. At, uh, a, at a low price. If you want, If you want a link to this, actually, I bet you there are a lot of I people. I want one of these. <laughs> yeah. I don't no. know if I have any floppies left, honestly. I don't, you've been. What do you do floppies? with them? Did you actually threw them out? Yes. I kind of wish I didn't, because there is stuff that was on those floppies that I that I don't have. I would think some of the first computer programs I wrote, for instance, were on floppies. Oh yeah. Um, I put them on a zip disk. Does that help? No. Um, if you want to find a floppy drive, my friends, go to <laughs> gizwiz.biz. G i z w i z dot b i z. And click the link that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. All the different gizmos and gadgets he's talked about over the weeks and months gone by are on there. Uh, and, by the way, while you're at the site, you can still buy his book. It's, but I think, we're, I think we're running out, aren't we? Now you can, yeah. now you can print a new edition. <laughs> That's right. But Good Days in Mad is there. Mad Collectibles, because Dick's been writing for Mad Magazine for decades. And let's not forget the What the Heck Is It contest. A chance to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine. Just identify a close-up of a gizmo or a gadget. I'm thinking it's an organ pipe. But, uh, but you know, I don't know. No, no hands, I don't know what no it is. Hands. Yeah, and just a week left. You don't have to get it right, uh, although... 
if you do, you're in the running for, I think, what is it, eight MADs? Uh, there's more. Uh, six MADs six. for the right answer and a dozen for wrong answers. For the wrong, the best wrong answers. And this is the uh, the Halloween edition autographed by Dickie D. This runs out uh, Sunday, a week from tomorrow. So uh, don't wait. Go to gizwiz.biz. And Dick's, of course, got his gizwiz TV, his podcast, and uh, his information about the Halloween meetup uh, on the website somewhere? Uh, we've just been talking about it on the show. You just have to I'll, know. I'll, you, you have, have to, to know. You have to be in the know. Yeah, okay. Hey, Dick, have a wonderful... Uh, I'm not going to be here next week. We're going to be in reruns, so have a wonderful Halloween, and you I will too, see you in two weeks. have a great trip. Thank yeah, you. Excellent, excellent. I shall bring back some tortillas for you. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dickie D. Get the little ones. I need them for my floppy drive. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll fit beautifully. <laughs> toast them inside of the floppy yeah. drive. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do something with it now that you got one. I mean, I mean, honestly, it's one of those things you buy and you're going to use, you know, once. Yep. And then, you know, one and done. Although you can buy floppy disks as well on Amazon, and now I think I might have some fun. Is anybody, are they making them? One says discontinued by the manufacturer, so I guess they just have some still. We just have some left. Imation. How much for a flop? One one box of floppies. One box of floppies, a 10-pack is $18.39. <gasps> that seems expensive. It does. You'd end up spending $40 to relive your past. $20 on the disk drive and then $20 <laughs> on the floppy disks. <laughs> But for that sound and that sort of physical experience. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week at Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon. This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. <laughs>